NHL on Prime Network. The Atlanta Knights 4-1-5 and five in their last 10, going up against the Cincinnati Cyclones, who are 8-0-2 oh, in their last 10. This is Gino Briaco, the head coach of the Atlanta Knights, in his second year with this team. He'll make his second All-Star appearance later this month in Fort Wayne. On the opposite side, Dennis DeRosier. He's coached this team since they started, and they actually started out in the East Coast Hockey League. He's now in his fourth season. He, too, will be at the All-Star Game as a co-coach. There's Mike Greenlay. Won his last time in this building. He'll need another big effort tonight because, as we said earlier, it's a tough building for the visitors to win in. And there's an Olympic hero, Ray LeBlanc, who tried to be another Jim Craig in 1992 and came, what, maybe a couple games short, but that's it. That's exactly it. A very good goaltender, and he's going to have his hands full tonight, too. He's still on loan from the Chicago Blackhawks organization. He played last year in Indianapolis and, in fact, led the IHL in saves. Hard to break in the lineup with Ed Belfour in Chicago. This is one of those old buildings like we told you. You'll notice right away that the two benches are on the opposite sides of the ice. It's been a long time since I've seen that. Yes, uh, very surprising. It's a mix of very difficult and line changes, so we might have to watch out for that tonight. Atlanta in black, white, and some teal. The most popular color these days. They'll bring it up, dumping it in from center. Ian Kidd will chase it. In red, white, and black come the Cyclones. Kidd's pass on the right side intended for Leach. Knocked back in the zone. Played off the boards. Cyclones move it out. As Dennis DeRosier told us this morning, they have a very agile, very mobile defense. All their defensemen can move up ice. Well, that's something they're going to have to do tonight. They need to get that quick transition game if they're going to uh, score some goals. They certainly have to do that. Leach was looking for that long pass. It was intercepted. Dumped right back in. Here's Atlanta with a shot. That one goes wide. Behind the cage. Dug out. McDougal's pass in front. Glove. LeBlanc makes his first save pretty early in the contest. Well, a nice save, too. He had to be ready. Uh, you want to get a shot early in the game. LeBlanc, I think, wanted to feel the puck as soon as he could. Makes a good save on a, on a quick wrist shot from the slot. So uh, he's going to have to be sharp tonight. Uh, certainly, they need a win here. They can take a replay here. A quick glove save, and it was heading for the low corner. So he made a very sharp save to, to start the night. Ray LeBlanc has won his last three decisions. Last start, though, at home was back on December 4th. Pokey Reddick obviously gets most of the work, and you'd start Pokey, too, with his record. Off the draw, it goes behind the cage, center on the far wing boards. On that far side, Greenlaw. Clearing it up, it was intended for Lawless and picked off. Drop pass left there on the right wing side. Played across. Intercepted. Here's a chance. Lawless, he's got great speed. Over the line, the shot save. Rebound is loose. And then, oh, Greenlay went crashing into the goalpost. Right into the back of the crossbar, but he's all right. Gretzky, a very familiar name, and someone that Bernie Federko will be chatting with at the end of period one. That's Brent Gretzky. He'll wear number nine for Atlanta. On the far side, Miller tries to center it. Off Gretzky. Picked up. Cyclones can't clear out. It's jumped right back in by the Knights. LeBlanc out of his net. Along the boards, their side. Taken by Lawless. Off Biggs. Biggs' pass was blocked. Taken out. Backhand pass by Atlanta. Going long distance. They're looking for Steve LaRouche. Icing was waved off. Along the left wing boards. Gord Hines giving it up. He and Riche as a pair both made the all-star team. That's probably as good a pair as you'll see in the IHL. Yes, they are very uh, solid defensemen that are really both going to have a solid future uh, in the Florida Panther organization. Back the other way, Atlanta. Three on three. It's broken up at the blue line of Cincinnati. Stefan LeBeau. Or Patrick LeBeau. Stefan's his brother who plays for Montreal. I thought that sounded wrong. It's dumped out ice. All the way down, intended for an icing, and that should be the case as it's touched on that far side. It'll come all the way back to the other side. Riche making that touch. He played last year for the Boston Bruins, a little bit with Providence, their affiliate in the American Hockey League. An excellent def uh, defenseman as we talked. He's very offensive-minded, 23 points in 22 games, plus 23. That's pretty impressive right there. Uh, the guy that uh, Dennis DeRosier really looks forward to uh, getting out there as much ice time as he can. And, uh, there's a guy we're going to have to watch tonight. But real interesting tonight, a lot of brother acts here uh, in action. And a lot of their older brothers, younger brother Nedved, who is not playing tonight, but his younger brother, of course, in Vancouver. And we've got a Gretzky's brother, and we've got Trevor Linden's brother here, uh, Jamie Linden. So there's a lot of brother acts here between the I and the uh, National Hockey League. Along 
the boards. Atlanta digging it out. Near side. The centering pass almost went enough. Riche dug out. Back the other way. Patrick LeBeau's pass. Near side. Lynn Berry. One of six All-Stars. Offside indicated by Stevens, the linesman. Waved off. Picked up at the other end. Sean Rivers was 24. Coast to coast, slap shot, and it's gloved by LeBlanc, but that shot had some speed rising on it. Cincinnati just let Rivers come all the way down ice. Not something that you want to do, but that's something that the defense is going to have to do for Atlanta. They want to move up the play here. He takes it coast to coast, a slapper, and again, Ray LeBlanc makes a big save uh, high on the right side of him. A big, solid save, and something that uh, he's been sharp so far tonight. He's got a couple of really quick shots at his end, and uh, he's been up to the challenge. Faceoff will be to the right side of LeBlanc. McDougal, who has played some for Edmonton, starting out at center. And he'll go up against Goche, who was just named to the All-Star team. McDougal, last year, Cape Breton, 26 goals, 26 assists, 52 points. Can you believe it? In 16 playoff games. That's incredible. And the American Hockey League playoff MVP with those kind of numbers. You probably got every vote, I would think. In the neutral zone, it's dug out, brought back in over the line. Ed Edgerton trying to center it through along the far wing side. Kept in at the point by Atlanta. Akins, Greenlaw. Seven goals for Greenlaw. Five of them have come here at the Cincinnati Gardens. Taken out behind the net, Eric Sharon. Around the boards, kept in by Ian Kidd. The long shot glove by Greenlight. He leaves it. Atlanta, hard time clearing it out. Kidd pitching in, but couldn't get control. It's back to Akins. Grant Akins pass connecting but the pass to Greenlaw is off the mark from Gauthier Woo! Atlanta quick touch passing intercepted back the other way over the line pass to Lawless was just off the mark that was Jason Cerrone played in Italy last year here's McDougal three on three and an offside just jumping in over the play Atlanta guilty of that infraction 15-58 first period from Cincinnati it's scoreless John Biggs off the face off with Steve LaRouche. The Knights get it and dump in. Off the boards. Cincinnati cleared it beyond the reach of Lawless. It goes all the way down ice. Icing is the indication. And the touch is made. Icing is the call. One thing uh, we talked earlier this morning about it, the article in the paper that the crowd was doing uh, the other night uh, against Peoria. Not a very, very good start again for the Cyclones. Uh, they are very, very dynamic hockey club. Uh, run and gun and shoot and score. And uh, they, lead, they lead the league in goals against and they score a lot of goals. So this crowd really... Uh, doesn't appreciate them not winning all the time. Uh, they weren't, uh, they, I guess, expressed their dissatisfaction the other night. Tonight, they uh, may start doing that if they don't get on track soon. LeBlanc made a save at the point, the rebound, and no chance there. Jason Ruff had the opportunity, but couldn't get good wood to it. All the way back in the neutral zone. Norman Rochefort plays it up. Rochefort again, that was over LeBlanc. Cincinnati almost sleepwalking through this first period. They played five games in seven nights a week ago, and they may be still suffering from those effects. Certainly that's what DeRozier thought was the problem on Wednesday. Well, they play a lot of games in a short span of time. Uh, these guys don't have much recovery time, so it really makes it difficult for them. But they're at home, and they need to get on track real soon. Taken by Hines. Gord Hines, number 57, brings it in over the line. Hell, oh, he had a player wide open on that left wing side. LeBeau, very speedy, but too speedy in that case because he was offside. Well, there's, they're the kind of team that uh, is very explosive, as we talked earlier, so I'm sure that Dennis DeRozier is not that concerned right now. But uh, I think when you've got a team like that, what Atlanta can't do is they can't continue to pressure and, not, and, not, and worry about not checking because one two-on-one, uh, turn over quickly. Uh, they do have a great transition game. They could burn them real easily. So uh, you always got to make sure that you have a player back and, and watch for the, the winger, especially coming wide in that long pass and maybe even a breakaway. Len Berry will center for Patrick LeBeau left. Doug Brown wide, who's just back after missing three games with a concussion. Riche and Hines are the defensemen. Cincinnati brings it in over the line. Gretzky's line with Miller and Tardif. This has been their best line for a while. Tardif has added some aggressiveness in his rookie season to the Knights. Right wing side, over the line. Tardif holding. Plays it across off a of deflection. Picked up, shot in, but it went wide by Sean Rivers. Cleared back the other way. Down the wing, Len Berry. 
Breaks on, plays it across, the big shot, Richet, what a save! Cutting down the angle was Greenway. And back come the Knights, there's that counterattack. Offside. But you saw some of their speed when they yes. broke. There it is, there's what we're talking about, just one break, and Lenberry made a great play on it. Uh, fed Richet on the far wing, and Richet uh, made a excellent, you'll see it here. Barry stops, and instead of going into the middle, he goes far side to Richet, slot shot, and Greenlay makes a real good save. He came out, cut down the angle, he was charging. Uh, that's where maybe, I think uh, Richet would like to have that back, maybe take the shot, take one step, and try to go in between the legs. But an excellent save by Greenlay. Greenlay played part of last year with Atlanta, part with Louisville. Under contract to Tampa Bay. Picked up now. Doce plays it on the near side. Here's Leach over the line. Greenlaw cuts for the net. Played across at the right point. He gets behind Kidd. Here's a chance. Atlanta breaking on the right side. McDougal onside. McDougal playing it across. It was deflected. Kept alive for McDougal in the slot and knocked away by Ian Kidd. And out of danger for the moment are the Cyclones. Shot in around the boards. It's still scoreless. Atlanta looking the better team in this first period. We're gone a little bit better than six minutes here. Loose puck at the side of the net, picked up. Gauthier takes it behind the net. An all-star once more. Second straight year for him. Six Cyclones in the all-star game coming up in Fort Wayne. Three for the night, so nine altogether. Add in two coaches, that's quite a collection. Well, when you're uh, leading the league in uh, you know, win percentage and points, uh, you should be there, and uh, they certainly have a lot of guys that deserve to be there. Gauthier flipping it. Oh, Lawless almost caught that and would have had to drop it quickly, so there would have been no penalty. Deflected right back the other way, picked up, controlled by the Cyclones. Right side pass, too far intended for Biggs, and it comes all the way back into the Cyclone zone. 13-11 to play, first period, and it's scoreless here in the Cincinnati Gardens. Right wing side, here they come. Long distance shot, easy save for Greenlight. Picked up behind the net, Rivers around the boards. Sharon and Crosser there, back into the neutral zone, picked up. Shot in by Hayward. Hayward leads the team in penalty minutes with 140, but hasn't picked up a minor in five games. LaRouche, right wing. Centers it across and a score. The Knights score first at Stan Drulia. What a great play. You're going to see this is what happens. One guy going to the net. Drulia left all alone to the far side. A picture-perfect pass, and it's in the net. Uh, that's good teamwork, and that's something that they got to get away from here. It was a nice pass. LaRouche makes across. Drulia makes no mistake. LeBlanc had no chance to try to slide across, stack his pads. LaRouche with the pass across. He, uh, LeBlanc tries to stack his pads, but not able to get across in time. Drulia uh, gets another nice, nice goal here. That's real nice hockey. That's the way it's supposed to play. One guy going through the net. Drulia all alone on the far side. Makes no mistake. Drulia on his off wing is 19th goal of the season from LaRouche and Buchanan at 7-18. LeBlanc clearing it, but not yet out of danger behind the net. Set it in front and a nice save, LeBlanc. Otherwise, it's two to nothing. Guess who that was again? It was Drulia, this time on his normal wing. He's going to talk to himself when he gets back to the bench on that one. Out of the point, Buchanan tees it up. It's deflected. It's loose. Shot right at LeBlanc. Knights continue to put the pressure on. They keep it alive. But a whistle on a hand pass. Incredible stuff in this opening period of play. The visitors from Atlanta putting on a show. They lead it. One to nothing in Cincy. Welcome back, everyone, to the Cincinnati Gardens. It's the IHL on Prime Network with Bernie Federico. I'm John Paul Della Camera. The Atlanta Knights sticking with their game plan and doing well, leading it one to nothing. Should have been two. Julia missed an, a much easier chance, certainly, than the one he scored the goal on. Well, it's a, certainly an easy chance, but a great goaltending. LeBlanc got across and made the big save on it. I think uh, maybe Drulia took his eye off a little bit, thought he had an easy goal, and you got to bear down. Really important to bear down in those situations. Look at this skating motion by Cincinnati. Barry finally dumps in. Len Barry will be the first man to chase it. He played last year with Hershey. Had a cup of coffee, maybe a little bit more, with the Philadelphia Flyers. Good prospect. Did well with Hershey. Did very, very well with Philly, too. He got two goals and two assists in eight games. Uh, it's pretty impressive. So I think there's another kid that's got a, got a fine future, 50 points this year. Uh, a guy that really likes to bang. He's got good hands. He's got good wheels. He can, he can do it all. He's really a complete player. It's just a matter of getting his chance. He's a young kid still. He's only 24 years old. So uh, once he gets his chance, I'm sure he'll make good of it. That's Gord Hines, 57. We're going to look at the save here. Here's the one that was, there's another big save. Le, LeBlanc came across and was able to smother this one. And he made another one earlier on Drolli, the one we were talking about, too, that he was able to get his glove on it. So it's a big.
big save by uh, LeBlanc, uh, who has really met the challenge. It could be 2 or 3 nothing right now. Atlanta's 12-2-5 and five when they score the first goal of the game, which they have here tonight. Centering pass. Barry, save. Nice one for Greenlight. On the near wing side, it's dug out. Here come the Knights again. Here's Miller. He scored the game one of the last time these two clubs met. Miller tied up along the boards. Away from the boards now by Hines. Kept alive. Near wing side. Played across. It was deflected. Miller will chase it down. He has Gretzky behind the net. Off the Hines check. Here's Barry open. Neutral zone. Len Barry with a good cross ice speed. Over the line. Richet again. Stefan Richet looking to center it. He went down behind the net. Here's a long shot. Save. Rebound loose. Still loose. And Greenlay will finally cover up. It looked like Richet fanned on it the second time. And now Barry with more than words. Here comes Richet and now Hines. And a little frustration maybe on Cincinnati's part. Really the first real chance that uh, Cincinnati has had tonight. They put some good pressure. They had two or three good chances. But they weren't able to find the, the uh, handle on the puck. It kept bouncing around. It's a big, big play here. Riche again, we talked about his speed, his puck handling ability. He goes to end to end here. He got tripped there, got away with it. Uh, but then a couple of real good scoring chances here is a scramble here. The puck doesn't end up in the net. Greenlay makes some, some good saves. Dives up in. We get a penalty called on the uh, Knights. That's Tardiff. Two minutes for hooking, and time of the penalty will be 9-14. Hard play has not been good, though, for either side. Well, one of the few uh, chinks in Cincinnati's armor has been their power play. We talked to Dennis DeRogier this morning, and if they could have, have a better power play, they might have not lost the game this year. So, still pretty impressive. Uh, uh, they are, have the ninth best, I guess, or whatever, fourth worst power play in the league, but that can change at any time. Almost 18%, which is not that impressive, but all you need is one to get it even here. It's actually better on the road, like a lot of their stats are, and we'll talk more about that later on. Right now, it's a 1-0 lead for the Knights, who are shorthanded. Here comes a break on the right side for Drulia. Walking in shorthanded, and he scores in the backhander. Oh, that'll kill your power play. Stan Drulia gets a shorthanded goal. His second of the game, 20th of the year. Look out, Atlanta's leading 2-0. Well, it's the second of the, the first game that they were in here. They scored a shorthanded goal. The game that they were back, they won 3-1. So if that's an indication of how they're playing. Here, Drulia got lucky. The puck was shot. I missed it on a wide. Came around the net. He ended up on a breakaway. And then goes to his backhand after he stutter step Ray LeBlanc. And then was able to peek him onto his backhand. And then just fired over top. A very nice goal. That shows good hands. His 20th of the year. Uh, he's going to score a lot more than 20 when he's got hands like that. 140 to go on the power play. I was going to say before that Atlanta has the second best penalty killing unit in the IHL. Cincinnati has the best, but those shorthanded goals can kill you. Two to nothing right now for the visitors from Atlanta. The one thing that uh, the Cyclones don't want to do right now is not panic. They can get one back on the power play, and they're going to be back with one goal. They start as if they were even uh, at the start of the power play, so the crowd is not very happy right now, but uh, I'm sure one goal, a quick goal on the power play, could really get this crowd back into it. They gave assists to Greenlay and Buchanan on that shorthanded goal. Here's Hines down the left side, shooting it in wide. Higher play on for Cincinnati. Hines in a corner, behind the net, looking to center it out. Hines again, left side. Nobody's at the left point. They're using one point man, and Riche couldn't keep it in. Gino Briaco will use three different sets of forwards to try and kill most penalties. Young, fresh players with speed, and it's work. Now that's what you want to do, is keep everybody off balance. If you go short and hard for 20 or 30 seconds, you got lots of energy. You're going to keep everybody off balance. Don't give them a chance to get set up. Barry and LeBeau. LeBeau right across. Free shot. Set. Greenlee didn't see where the rebound went. Kept alive. Boralt in the corner. Flips it all the way around the boards. Now all the way across to the right wing circle. Behind the net. Centered in front and the shot was blocked. Atlanta looking to scramble in front. They can't clear it out. Now finally they do. But chances right there. For all one of two players that had chances to score. Good chances but really no shots on goal. They've got to get it on the net and they're not getting it on the net. Tardiff ready. He's out. And he's coming in. Over the line. Nice drop pass. Bitsky shot it wide. I think LeBlanc was beaten on that. He went down very early. 2-0 Atlanta leading it. Here come the Cyclones. Over the line. Baral. Looking. Barry was free for the moment. Laveau's pass. A blind pass. It comes all the way back into the neutral zone for Aikens. Paired on defense with Hayward. Now LeBlanc. Over the line. Barry on the off wing. Checked along near boards. That was McDougal. Clearing pass picked off 
stopped by Aikens, neutral zone. Hayward can't get to it. Miller. Pass back intended for Miller, goes too far. Icing is indicated, it won't have the legs. Right now, Atlanta's just outworking uh, the Cyclones. They're just bit into the puck, they want it more. I mean, I'm surprised the Cyclones need to start dumping it in, getting some forechecking. That's what their key to their team is forechecking, and they're not doing any of it right now. All the way back to the other end. Cyclones in deep. Here's Hayward. They're down 2 0. In a bit of a hole here in this first period. Over the line, Sarone dropping it off. Greenlaw. Greenlaw battling. That's Jeff Greenlaw. Along the boards, loses it in the corner. Julia plays it back. Sean Rivers. Sean Rivers, number 24, seven and a half to go. First period. Knights surprising the home team here, the Cyclones of Cincinnati. Peoria had that 2 0 lead the other night, Wednesday, and then had a 3 1 lead but lost it. Cincinnati came back with three unanswered. LeBlanc sticks it off the boards, near side. Greenlaw leading it off, now takes it back. Leach jumps in from the center line. Picked up there, Buchanan, first man on it for the Knights, plays it out into the neutral zone, picked off for the moment, and then taken back. Here's Medill, big slapper, and LeBlanc was handcuffed by it, it's still loose. Cyclones can't clear it out. Medill, centering pass. A chance here. Edgerton trying to get free in front. Keeps it alive. Wrist shot went high and just over LeBlanc. Medill causing problems in front. He and Hayward battle. Loose puck now taken by Lalas of Cincinnati. Biggs on the right wing side. Here's a break. Linden. J.D. Linden is the extra four. He doesn't play a lot, but here he gets in behind the defense. Don Biggs makes a nice pass to him, and he cuts in. It looks like he's going to dig, and all he does is slide it between the pads of Greenlay, and there's no chance there. Real nice, pretty goal. Looked like he was going to go and deke him, but he got behind him, made a good play. He was able to corral the puck, and then just kind of slide it in between Mike Greenlay's pads. Linden's first goal of the year. Good time to get it. Good time to get it. There was a whistle somewhere down there, but through the roar of the crowd, no one heard it. 6.25 remaining in this first period. The visitors from Atlanta have a 2-1 lead, but the Cyclones are coming back. A pretty goal was scored here. Trevor Linden gets behind the defense as he cuts in. It looks like he's going to deke, but he just slides it between Mike Greenlee's pads. Not much you can do there. When you walk in all by yourself, a lot of times the goalie's going to come out and challenge him, but he stayed back. Tried to outguess him, and he didn't do it. But a real nice goal by Mr. Linden in his first of the year. A nice way to get it. Biggs in for this faceoff, which he wins. Soroic takes it all the way to the right side. Shot saved in front. Rebound all the way out of that far wing side. Stan Drulia picks it up. Headman's it out of the zone. LaRouche taking it. Lost it. Hayward almost overskated it. LaRouche recovered well. Julia will pick it up at the top of the right circle. And that one is deflected way upstairs it goes. Atlanta very quick. Gino Briaco talked about that this afternoon, how quick they are as a team. Speed very much an asset for the Knights. Yes, it is. I mean, I've been very impressed with their transition game. But something you want to do is once, once that puck's turned over, you've got to go from offense to defense. When it's turned over the other way, you got to go from defense to offense. And they're doing a very good job with that. They've kept the Cyclones off balance for most of this part of the game. But again, with the Cyclones dynamic offense, you've got to be so careful. You let a, uh, just a one mistake, like what happened with Linden, and it could be a tie game. So uh, very interesting. Both, both teams playing very well right at the moment. Off the faceoff, Brent Gretzky tried to win it for the Knights. Cleared all the way around the boards by Richet, but not out of the zone. Big long slap shot was saved by LeBlanc. In the corner, battle for it there, swept along the boards. Stefan Richet picks it up. Richet leading it, trying to find LeBeau. Knights take it back right at the red line. Backhand pass as Rochefort took a hit in the process. Off Gretzky, who's back in his own end to try and help out. Knights take it out. Miller, lead pass, almost brings someone. Coming through, the shot was saved by LeBlanc. And then the centering pass was stopped. That was Tardif, who had the chance. Picked off and sent back in by the Knights. They were offside. It's waved off. Hines with some open ice. Fort Hines, circle, the shot. And it went just wide of Greenlake. Cleared, but not yet. 
get out of the zone. Riche tees it up. It's deflected. A bouncer rolls wide. Taking it into the corner. Shots on goal. Show Atlanta up by a pair. 9-7. They scored one shorthanded. Two goals in this one by Atlanta. Both by Julia. One by Linden. Gretzky. Long distance. A blocker saved by LeBlanc. And then that rebound just squirted out in front. Back the other way. Goche. Brings it over the line. And an offside call. Goche played last year for Cleveland. And played very well against Cincinnati. Probably one of the reasons they brought him here. It's 2-1. to one. Atlanta has the lead. Welcome back, everyone, to the IHL on Prime Network with Bernie Federko. I'm John Paul Della Camera. Atlanta, the visitors in the black uniforms. They're up 2-1 to one on two Stan Drulia goals. Cincinnati got off to a very slow start and gave one up shorthanded. Far wing side for Goche. Filling it in behind the net. Duck out. Eric Chiral took a check. Cincinnati starting to hit a lot better than they were at the start of this game. And they're starting to get it in deep, and that's what they have to do. They need to keep line off balance and get it in deep and try to do some four checking. Goche dropping it off. Greenlaw trying to dump it in and get his own. And does. In a corner. Kicks it free. Behind the net, the pass from Leach, centering pass. And that puck just hopped over Kid's stick, it looked like. All the way back for Grant Akins. Leach, Jamie Leach, his father, Reggie, played on the same line with Bobby Clark. Leach shot, and it's blocked upstairs. And a good thing it was blocked, I might add, by Buchanan. Top row, I might add, too. Uh, I think he can shoot it as hard as Reggie could. That went all the way to the top row. People are scrambling for the puck up there. Here's Dennis DeRoger, former player and a successful one in the International Hockey League. Still has a playoff scoring record. Played many years for Saginaw when they were in the league. And anybody that wants to play golf against him, he's got a bad elbow right now. He uh, talked to us this morning. He has to go for some treatment. So uh, maybe he can take some money up from the golf course. If he can just find a place in Cincinnati to play golf maybe tomorrow. Four feet of snow. I was gonna snow say. golf. I was going to say, I think that's going to be difficult. <laughs> Fans love hockey here in Cincinnati. The right wing side, Cyclones keeping it in. It's deflected in front, and then Greenlee made a save. It was still loose. Dug out on that far wing side. Cincinnati second in the IHL in attendance. Atlanta is third. Milwaukee, who have led the IHL the last five years, is still leading. Sixth straight year. Center is in front, and it's missed. Great opportunity. Oh, they would love to get that one back. Jason Ruff. Long shot went wide. Ruff averaged a point a game last year in the IHL. Behind the net, dug out. Lawless takes it behind his own net. Plays it on the left side to Biggs. Lawless just signed a three-year contract this summer. Play here in Cincinnati. Hayward giving it up. Seroic off a touch from Biggs. Cleared out of the zone by the Knights in the neutral zone it is. Less than three minutes to go in this first period. Lawless puts it into another gear. Trying to get around the defense. Buchanan did a nice job. Paul Wallace has got a lot of speed. He's used it in the National Hockey League before. He can skate, he can scoot, and I can understand why they gave him a three-year deal. Formerly with the Hartford Whalers, was the number one pick several years ago. All the way back the other end. 22 is Rochefort. Giving it up on the right wing side. Knights try to clear it. That almost hit Gretzky. Here's Miller over the line. I didn't think Tardif stayed on side. Miller tries to center. It's blocked once by Hines. Still alive, dug out, swept along the boards. LeBeau couldn't clear it. Knights outwork again. The Cyclones, it's deflected in front off the stick of Richet. Tardif keeps it in. Behind the net for Miller. Colin Miller. This is a hard working line. It's finally taken over by the Cyclones. Here they come. It's three on two. Pass on the near side. Len Berry. Greenway was going to come out, thought better of it. All the way around the boards, far wing side. Baral kept it in with a backhand flip. Knights don't clear the giveaway. Baral shot saved by Greenway. Knights take it out. They were very careless that time in their own end. It almost cost them. Here they come down the other way. One on one, Brent Gretzky dug out the other way. Here's Baral. Barry. Riche, open man. That's Barry, and then he couldn't control it. Pass of the forehand is intercepted. Back come the Knights. Over the line. Big shot. Saved there by the block off Jeff Bedell, who 
showed right there he can really fire him. He led Atlanta in goals scored coming in, but now he's second to Drulia. He came in with 19. Drulia had 18. Drulia now has 20. We look again. Watch how quickly he lets this go. 60 feet out from the blue line, he gets in maybe one stride, maybe two at most when he fired. And LeBlanc had to be right there. Ray LeBlanc, Olympic goal tender, 1992. Had a great goals against average in the Olympics. Off the draw, picked up by Ian Kidd. Kidd will take it back on the right side. Bernie Federko has already left, headed downstairs for the Brett Gretzky interview coming up at the end of period one. We're not too far from that. 108, left on the clock. 2-1, to one, Atlanta leading in first period. They played well. Two goals by Julia, one shorthanded. Lindman has his first goal in the IHL for Cincinnati. Here's Medill. Over the line, dropping it off. Pass by McDougal. Here's an open man coming through, and it's shot wide. What a great scoring chance for Corey Cross. Atlanta still working with it. McDougal behind the cage. Tried to come out, attempted the wrapper out, or fake like he was going to, and now gave it up. Goche, 35 seconds left. Goche turns it around, Cross. Breaking in on the right wing. Pass in front, and it's good. for Greenlaw, six at home. He loves home ice, and Goche started it all here. On his off wing, he goes backhand, right across, perfect pass, just tucked in by Jeff Greenlaw. From a different view, Goche beat Cross. Cross hurt himself at both ends. He had missed the shot down the other end, and then got beat by Goche's speed at the opposite end. 1931 is the time of that score. What a great time for the Cyclones to get one here at the end of the period, a period in which they were outplayed by Atlanta. But the scoreboard shows 2-2. Back on the right wing side, Soroic in the neutral zone, down to 12 seconds left in the period. And it's flipped upstairs on the backhander. They'll face it off again inside the Atlanta blue line. Nine seconds left, Gene Ubriaco. You can understand the look on his face because this team had a 2 to nothing lead. And right now they've seen it go to 2-2. Two, two. That looks like one of those uh, fanometers, doesn't it? Cyclonometer. I'll bet that red line goes up a lot higher before this one's over. They've had three crowds of better than 10,000. The building seats 10,326. And they have a good crowd on hand here tonight, and they're noisy. Right side, it's kept alive by Soroic. Down to five seconds left. Greenlay fires it around the boards. Hayward kept it in. Time running out. The horn sounds ending play in this first period. A strange period dominated for one stretch, certainly by Atlanta. But Cincinnati came back and scored the last two goals about six minutes apart after Atlanta had scored the first two before the period was half over. Julia has a pair. Linden has one goal. Greenlaw has another. Stick around. When we come back, Bernie Federko will chat with a very familiar name, Gretzky. It's not the great one, but it's his brother. It's next. It's tied at two after one. It's 2-2 Atlanta and Cincinnati after one here at the Cincinnati Gardens. You're watching the IHL here on Prime Network. I'm John Paul Della Camera. Time to kick it out downstairs to our special interview area where Bernie Federko is standing by with Brent Gretzky. Bernie? Thanks, JP. One of the most famous names in hockey, of course, in the whole world, Gretzky. And, of course, younger brother Wayne, uh, Brent Gretzky. Brent, uh, thanks for joining us. I guess a great start, but not the way you want to finish period. Oh, no, we're playing really well. We can't take anything away from our team or our goalie, you know. Uh, it was a bad fluke. Uh, so, you know, we got to come out just as strong in the second and third period. Uh, they know their, I guess, their record's really well after the second period of their lead, and they, they haven't lost. So we got to keep playing well the whole game. Brent, I guess everybody asks this question, but has it really been hard for you or difficult for you growing up in Wayne's shadow? I think it's been hard, but, it's you know, Keith went right after Wayne playing uh, hockey, and he unfortunately showed that there's not going to be another Wayne Gretzky. So I got kind of... Uh, let off a little bit of the rest. 
the other night, I guess earlier in the season, you got a chance to play against Wynn. I would assume that was for your first time when you were up in uh, in Tampa. Was that the first time you had to play against him? Oh, definitely. Even in uh, even in Brantford on the backyard rink, you know, we never got the chance to play with each other or against each other. So it was a thrill for me. I was really nervous, and uh, you know, hopefully, I play as well as I could. Was it? Was it? Now, do you don't get a lot of chance? He doesn't obviously get a lot of chance to watch you, but do you guys still get a chance to talk uh, over your problems, or do you have any problems? Is he the guy you turn to? Ah, uh, no, I turn to my parents for that. We don't get to talk very much. Uh, you know, maybe three or four times a year. We don't talk about hockey. We talk about other things, you know. So when we get the chance, you know, we try and uh, get along well. What does Brent Gretzky have to do to get back to the NHL and to stay? I think I got to put on about eight more pounds, uh, you know, and keep it there. It can't be just fluid. Uh, you know, as long as it's me, uh, you know, get a little quicker on my feet, I think I might have a good chance. Well, thanks for joining us. I'm sure it's in the genes, so I'm sure you'll be there and you'll stay for a long time. Thank you. Thank you. JP, I'm sure he'll be there. And you know what? If he turns out half as good as his brother, he's going to be a superstar in the NHL, too. Thanks, Brady. You can see that family resemblance here. He looks a lot like Wayne Gretzky. It's 2-2, Atlanta and Cincinnati after one. We'll look at highlights, stats, and a whole lot more when we come back to the Cincinnati Gardens. This is the IHL on Prime. Atlanta and Cincinnati, 2-2 after one period of play. The Knights should have a better score to look forward to, but they allowed Cincinnati to come right back in and take a rightful place in this game. With Bernie Federico, I'm John Paul Della Camera. It turned into the Stan Drulia show pretty early. Atlanta got off to the better start. Well, Sandrilli is their goal scorer, and he showed a couple here. He gets a nice pass here from LaRouche, and there's no chance for LeBlanc. It's a buy-in before he could even move, so pretty goal. Next goal is short-handed. He's going to get the puck around the boards. He's got a breakaway. He comes in, he stutter steps, and gets LeBlanc frozen there, and then he's going to, he goes to his backhand and just slides it over top of him. Pretty goal. Uh, that's a goal scorer's goal and 2 nothing lead. But here it comes right back. Linden walks in. He's able to look like he's going to dig, but he's able to slide it right through uh, the goalie's legs. A very, very pretty goal. And then to tie it just with 29 seconds remaining is a pretty, pretty goal by Greenlaw. Gochi, he gets a pass. He's got empty net. Greenlaw slides it in, in past Greenlay. And there's Greenlay past Greenlaw or Greenlaw by Green, Green, Greenlay. It was a great goal. Whatever, I agree with that. It was a 15 to 11 edge in terms of shots on goal for Atlanta. We look at the scoring. It was Drulia at 718, Buchanan and LaRouche. Drulia from Buchanan, Buchanan and Greenlay. That made it two to nothing Atlanta. That one was the shorthanded goal. Linden is first IHL goal from Soroic and Biggs. Atlanta still led, but by two to one. And then Greenlaw with his eighth. And as we told you earlier, sixth at home at 1931. That tied it. Had to be frustrating for Atlanta. They were the better team in the first period. It's only a 2-2 tie. That's all they have. Well, Brett and I talked about it a little bit. You never want to get the lead and then end up giving it back. But, of course, Cincinnati does have a dynamic hockey club. And I don't think that Atlanta's too disappointed that they have a 2-2 tie right now. Cincinnati got off to a slow start. What happened, though? They did wake up. They started to hit a little more. They skated a little bit better, too. That picked up. JP in the second period is always their best period. They've almost scored twice as many goals as anybody else in the opposition in the second period. So this is their big, big period. But uh, to get out of the period with a 2-2 tie, and the, the biggest thing is that they scored in the last minute of play, and that really kind of takes the wind out of the sails of the Knights, and it's really going to be a real challenge for the Knights to get back into this game. That leads to a lot of conversation in the locker room at half, at the end of the first period of play. Gina Briaco has to remind his young players there's still two more periods to go, while Dennis DeRoger has to be pumped because this team has come back from 2 nothing down to tie it at 2 after 1. Welcome back, everyone, to the Cincinnati Gardens in Cincinnati, Ohio. Atlanta 2, Cincinnati 2. With Bernie Federico, I'm John Paul Della Camera. We told you at the top about one of the keys for Atlanta. They had to move the puck out of their own zone and do it well. They've done that. That's one of the reasons they led 2-0. Well, they really kept Cincinnati off getting this crowd back into it. Uh, what you have to do is forecheck, especially on the road, and that's something they did very well. Uh, Gino Gracchi, oh, oh, okay. such a great transition game, and they really showed it there. The defense, really, when it was puck was turned over, they moved it up to the forwards, and they got it deep into the Cincinnati zone. The stats show that Atlanta had the edge in terms of shots on goal at 15 to 11. You see the scores that even the power plays, Atlanta was 0 for 1. 
but Bernie, they scored a shorthanded goal, which could have been a key goal in this one. Well, especially teams are so important. Uh, anytime you get a shorthanded goal like that, it really pumps up your club, and that's certainly what's happened right now to Atlanta. But, of course, Cincinnati did get the goal back late in the, in the, in the first period there to tie the game. So, again, we've got an even score. Uh, I think Atlanta's probably feeling pretty good about it, and I'm sure Cincinnati is too, because, as we said earlier, the second period is their best period. Momentum-wise, it was Atlanta's in the first maybe 15 minutes. In the closing couple of minutes, you'd have to give an edge to Cincinnati. The crowd was really charged up when that last goal was scored. That's right. That's home ice advantage. That's what you want to do is you want to get the crowd into it. This crowd is a big crowd tonight. Uh, they're excited about the score right now. They weren't too excited. They showed their displeasure by a few rounds of booze there earlier. But they are playing very well now. Uh, they've got some momentum. Let's see if they can take it into the second period. I heard some more rounds of booing. That was for the Atlanta Knights who have just come back out. Bernie Federico told you the second period, that's the Cyclones' best. They've more than doubled the opposition. We'll see how good the second period is to them tonight from the Cincinnati Gardens. That's their mascot, Mr. Cyclone. He'll be ready for the second period. Cincinnati of the Cincinnati Gardens with Bernie Federko and John Paul Della Cameron. It's 2-2. You know, when we went away during that last commercial break, we showed you Mr. Cyclone. He is their official mascot. Came over and got Bernie's autograph right before we started. He's from St. Louis. The Blues fans everywhere. What a small world. Unbelievable. <laughs> you can now say you know Mr. Cyclone as he's proud to know you. Second period's underway. Knights in black. And the offside pass is called. It's important for the Knights to get off to a good start, I think, Bernie, in the second period. They certainly did in the first, and now they've got to get that momentum back in the road. Well, JP, unfortunately, all the guys usually write, read the stats. A lot of coaches don't like to have the players see the stats because they see little uh, idiosyncrasies that the press puts out. And right now, they are aware that Cincinnati scores twice as many goals as everybody else does in the second period. So I'm sure, certain that Cincinnati's going to try to prove that. Second period, just seconds old. Shot in by Aikens around the boards. It came back out. Kidd couldn't get the handle on it. Cincinnati trying to set a message here early with some good board checking in the opening moments of play. Behind the net. Taken right there by 27, Corey Cross. who missed out on a great chance to score a goal for Atlanta near the end of that first period. Back the other way. Edgerton coming in. Forehand shot was just wide of LeBlanc. Taken at the other end. Off the deflection, it comes back. Kidd will take it from Akins. Right side, Leach. Bad pass all the way back behind Akins. LeBlanc settles it. LeBlanc had to make 13 first period saves. Nine for Greenway at the other end. Dumped by Akins and stopped by Buchanan. Oh, he had a chance there to set up number 16, Bill McDougal, but it was just too far. Far enough, though, for Eisen. So it'll come all the way back to the opposite side. Not as good a start here in this period as it was in the first. But attendance-wise, we told you earlier the Cyclones were second, and there's the chart that shows it. Atlanta's third. Look how many teams, though, you count them. There are five over 7,000, and Kansas City is probably one game away from reaching that as well. Well, obviously, that's the reason why there's more teams that want to get in. Uh, and of course, next year, Denver coming in. It's a... Uh, Hockey is such an upswing in this country, and uh, what a great crowd uh, all these places are having. And the international hockey league just keeps continues to grow and keeps continuing to uh, fill the building. Next year, Denver's in, so is Minnesota, maybe Houston and someone else. Off the draw, taken to the right side. They were expecting about 9,000 here tonight. No official word yet on the attendance as Atlanta brings it back up ice. On his off wing, Jason Ruff tried to pass it through, and a player went right down. No penalty called. Behind the net, Atlanta digs it out on the backhand, or LeBlanc ties it up. A lot of chances here. Dennis DeRosier was concerned, no matter who was in goal, whether it was Redick or LeBlanc, he said they'd give up an awful lot of shots, and the goaltending has really saved DeRosier's club this year. Well, that's right. Pokey Redick is, is so solid. LeBlanc has played very well tonight, but I guess what he said is that you know, when you have a run-and-shoot offense the way they do, uh, you're going to make some mistakes, you're going to turn the puck over, and you really have to have your goaltender come up big. Uh, he doesn't like so many chances, but uh, the goaltenders keep coming up big, and uh, as long as you're winning, I don't think you really concern yourself too much about it. Sirolek will find it, fires it around the boards. Neutral ice, played all the way to the right wing side, shot in by the Knights. 2-2 if you're just joining us, second period. Not too old here, not even two minutes old. Near side, Biggs off the boards. Neither team has had much of an opportunity here in period two. Lawless pass, Biggs. 
54 goals a year ago in the American Hockey League. 138 points set a scoring record. They'll try to play it across. It's heroic behind the net. Centering pass in front of the puck trickle free. And then it's dug out. Here's Julia. Tripped up was rough, but play continues on his off-wing side. LaRouche centers it one-handed. Nice attempt on that far wing side. Bodies collide again. LaRouche behind the net. A penalty now. Only the second penalty called by Waltham, the referee. And it happened to the left side of LeBlanc. We've got an elbowing penalty, it looked like. And some confusion there. Sarone is looking, so is Julia. It looks like it's going to be Mark Tardif. I think he just was unlucky to be the big guy going into the corner. I think he's just a little taller than everybody else. It looked like he got his elbow up, and he said, I, maybe it's not him. Uh, I don't know who he called it on. No one has gone to the box yet, have they? No. Nope. I thought he called Hayward. Mark Tardif, but, but it's, it's Hayward. Hayward, of course. I thought Atlanta had the puck, and he blew the whistle. I, I can't figure that out. Well, there was the elbow that was up a little bit. Pushing and shoving, so he saw it from a different angle, and he called it. It looked like Hayward did have his, his elbow up, but uh, Hayward is the big tough guy on defense, and it's really amazing that he's almost a hometown boy. He's from Toledo. Uh, they're very high on him uh, because of his size, and uh, Dennis DeRozier told us this morning that's where their tough guy is, that's where their size is, and uh, they've got a little bit of everything. They've got their size, they've got their uh, skill, they've got their uh, speed, and, and a guy like Lawless, so they're a pretty well-rounded team, which uh, I guess the record speaks for that. 142 penalty minutes now for Hayward as he sits out, but it's his first minor now in six games. Miller waved out of the circle. They have Gretzky to take it. Gretzky is the sentiment on this line, but Miller, Gene Briaco says, is his best and most consistent face-off man. So that's the second time tonight that they've used Miller first in a key face-off. Behind the net, it's centered. Almost went in off LeBlanc and a defenseman in front. On the left-wing side, Sharon to the right side circle. Knights take it with Gretzky on the power play. Center point area. Now to the left point. Sharon tees it up. It's deflected wide of goal. Gretzky will chase it. Gretzky holding. Top of the circle. Behind the net. They fake the give and go. Out at the right point. Big slap shot was deflected over LeBlanc. Behind the net. Atlanta will take it back. Holding it in the near circle this time. Gretzky again at center point. Back at the left side to Sharon. Intercepted by Hines. Third out. Reset. Short-handed on the far wing side. Played across. It's too far away from Barry. And back the other way. The Knights try to bring it out, intercepted, dump back in, should have been offside. It's delayed. Really interesting, two different ways of killing penalties. Uh, Atlanta much more aggressive. Cincinnati more into a box. They tried to stay in position and try to work, let them work the puck around the outside and uh, not let anybody get into the middle. But uh, I thought Atlanta set the puck up very well. They're, uh, they're not, they, they really don't have any set plays. They just try to move around until they get a good shot. Here they come on the drop pass. McDougal holding it. The circle gets free. The shot up the glove of LeBlanc. It's loose in the slot. LaRouche can't find it. Not only did they not have a, uh, a set power play here, but they change players a lot. Gina Briaco works them in sets of five. No real quarterback on this unit. Which can under, you know, which is probably the reason why they are you know, second last in the league and on the power play. You really got to have a quarterback. You have to have a way to set up. If you don't, it seems that everybody just is in a big scramble, and that's what they are right now. They're trying to move it around, and, and they're really not getting anything to happen. You can't judge it by this, but the power play has been improving of late. Here's Rivers, dumping it in wide behind the net. Penalty is over to Hayward. So the Cyclones have killed him, but they're in trouble here. And now finally swept away by Biggs. Full strength now are the Cyclones as it's flipped out by Biggs. He made a solid play for a high-scoring player back there on the defense for Cincinnati. But when you play with a smaller roster, you learn how to play all positions, and they say, these guys are doing it all. Cerrone, backhand pass, and Biggs was tied up well by Stan Julia. Rough. Bothered by Richet. Here come the Knights, showing that speed again on the counterattack, and an offside. Too much speed that time for the Knights. It's still 2-2. We play nearly five minutes here in period number two. This is the IHL on Pride. everyone to Cincinnati, the Cincinnati Gardens. It's 2-2, great atmosphere here in Cincinnati. Cincinnati's been a great hockey town for years. They used to have the, in the old days, I guess, Cincinnati Swords in the American Hockey League, and people still talk about the WHA Cincinnati Stingers. 
who were popular for a short time here. Yes, they were. Here's Biggs. As I remember, they played, though, in the Riverfront Coliseum. The Swords, I'm sure, played here. One of the first million-dollar contracts, Dennis Sopchuk. Westerner. Over the line comes Julia, leaving it off. Rock pass in front. Just too far in front for LaRouche, who had an 11-game scoring streak earlier this year, and here he comes again. Passed it out in front. Ruff couldn't get it. Ruff spun around. LaRouche is one of the more underrated players in the league. He was just named to the All-Star team. Shot in front. LeBlanc stopped it on the short side. Seen a lot of rubber here tonight. Ray LeBlanc. All the way back the other way. Relay came out. Saw it in advance. Finds Julia, team captain. Passing it off LaRouche. Taken right off his stick by Len Berry. Berry will jump in. Behind the net it goes. Atlanta with a 4 0 edge in terms of shots this period. Riche, 60 feet. Past the right circle. Berry behind the net. Berry set it. Riche set it. Greenway. Loose. Riche missed. Berry out at the left point. Cross side. Here's Ball. Block. He got it back. Ball coming through. Left circle of Hines. Hines holding. Right out in front. The outside of the post, not as close as it could have been. Behind the net, four players jam for it. No whistle. You know, in retrospect, I thought Hines was going to pull the trigger and tee it up, but he chose to pass it out in front unselfishly. And I think he had a better chance that he shot it. There's the icing that, that Atlanta needed. There's the best pressure that Cincinnati has had tonight. They were all over Rishi with a couple of real good chances. Just couldn't find the target. Uh, a couple of mistakes made by, by Atlanta. They should have covered up the puck and got it out of there. And they ended up giving it back to Rishi. And he had too many chances for the coach's life. Rishi here all alone in front. Makes a big save uh, like Greenlay does. And he's not able to cover up the rebound. Rishi tries to get the bouncing puck. Not able to do it. And they just keep the pressure on. Back to the point. Another good pass. And here's Harold has a chance. He gets blocked. And he ends up getting the puck back. And still getting defeated back inside. So a lot of chances. Not very good checking by Atlanta. Uh, very smart play on their part to finally ice the puck down the ice and uh, get a whistle. Off the draw. It comes out of the zone. Aikens punched it back. Knights take it. Lead pass off of the flexion. Coming through on this near side. Behind the net. Knights working it hard. Miller chasing it down. Tries to center out in front. Picked up, taken away. Right side. Here come the Cyclones. Greenlaw. Got part of a check. Got free. Trying to pass it. It was blocked. Taken away by Atlanta. Here they come. Gretzky in the middle. Right wing side to Miller. Campo also on that line. Centering pass. Look out. Walking in. The shot went too high. Good scoring opportunity that time for Rivers. Out at the right point, Dubois, and that's blocked. Pick up on the near wing side, Ian Kidd. Got a check in the process. Now it's Goche. Back in the right wing. Kidd leaving it off. Here's Leach. The shot knocked down by the blocker of Greenlay. Back come the Knights. This is end to end now, coast to coast hockey. Uh, they weren't kidding when DeRozier said that it was run and shoot, and that's exactly what's happening right now. That term comes from basketball, but we're seeing some of it here in hockey tonight. Up and down, both teams, it's 2-2 here in the second. Welcome back to the Cincinnati Guards. It's 2-2, the man at the end of the bench. All he did last year was win the Turner Cup. Never lost a playoff game, won his last 12 there. What a great year he's having now. 2.71 goals against average. Pokey Reddick enjoyed the night off. You earned it. Yes, he has. And, uh, you know, a guy that's a real fierce competitor. He's got a Stanley Cup ring in Edmonton. Uh, he'll be back in the National Hockey League before long. Signed to a contract by the Florida Panthers in the offseason. That's why he's here in Cincinnati after having played in Fort Wayne last Woo! year. All the way back the other end. Lawless chasing it. Greenlee came out. And Kurt at the other end. Hayward picking it up on defense with Sirolik for Cincinnati. 11.48 left in the second period of a 2-2 game. Lawless. Paul Lawless, 16 goals on the air. Here's Biggs. Back here, Scott. Rebounded. Sirolik and now Biggs looking to center. Biggs centers it out in front and it's Kurt away. Here's Drulia head manning it. Well done to Jason Ruff one-on-one. -on -one. Ruff on the forehand. Shot it high. Right side, Julia centers it off a deflection. 
Kept alive by Rivers, and it's blocked in front. Diggs, clearing it. Intercepted by LaRouche. Right back inside. Leaving it off. Julia fake to pull the trigger, and then did. Knights keep it in. Well done. Here's a shot wide by Buchanan. He has a pair of assists. So he's helped set up the two goals tonight. What I'm really impressed with, JP, with the Glider especially, is that their, their defense are really standing up. They're not giving Cincinnati a chance to get to the blue line and try to make a uh, play. What they're doing is they've got their staggering. The one guy's almost standing up at center ice. Uh, they've had a couple of times where the Cincinnati forwards have got behind and almost got a breakaway. But uh, as long as that winger has got a you know man on man with his coverage on the far wing, uh, they're going to really have a lot of success really shutting out the Cincinnati attack because you can't get any forechecking uh, strength in it when you've got a guy standing up and they're doing a real good job with it. Gretzky will take this draw against Lundberry. Off the draw, picked up. Rochford's shot deflected wide of LeBlanc. That almost got by. Far wing side, kept alive by Miller, dug out. Cyclones, here they come. They've got some speed of their own. There's Barry with a long distance shot wide of goal. It'll be Bernie Federico's in between period deaths after period number two. Two on two, Gretzky over the line. Walking in, Rochford, save the block, rebound. Missed the net, and then it was deflected wide. What a great chance the Knights just had. Behind the net, Gretzky tried to center it. Now along the near wing boards. A battle there. And it's dug out and taken away on the opposite side. Over the line. Moral with Barry. Now gives it up instead. There's a drop pass. Riche. And it's cleared out the other way. All the way back. Cyclones trying to take it. Hard check on the near side by Rochford. As he almost almost put Moral into his own bench. Well, Rochefort would like to have that one back. He had an excellent scoring chance. Wasn't able to uh, pull a trigger, try to put it high over top of where he was. Wasn't able to get a real nice, nice play by Frank Gretzky to set in Rochefort coming late. You got to get that defenseman up into the play, and, and Rochefort was able to get a real good scoring chance. We talked before about Goche and his success with Cleveland against Cincinnati. Last year, 11 games against the Cyclones, six goals, eight assists, 14 points, and two game-winning goals. So I guess the best thing to do is sign him for your team. That's right. And Dennis Grosier told us that this guy's probably got the best chance of really being an NHL star, a real solid player. Uh, he really likes, he works hard, a uh, real nice kid, I guess, and uh, has really been put on the checking line that scores a lot of goals. Uh, and he's never checked anybody in his life, according to Dennis, but he's doing a real good job right now. He'll be in for this face-off to the left side of Greenway. It was going to be against McDougal, but he's waved out. Edgerton will take the draw. He's a plus 18. He leads the Knights behind the net. Taken by Atlanta. Here they come in this 2-2 tie. Riding over the line. Big shot, Edgerton. LeBlanc was beaten. In the corner, Medill around the boards. Near wing side. Picked up again. Atlanta keeping the pressure on. 9.37 to go here in the second period of a 2-2 game. Gauthier back to get it. Right wing boards. Kept alive. McDougal paid the price and then took a swipe. That's her own. McDougal centering pass. The chance of LeBlanc at a piece. Counter-attacking here are the Cyclones. Three on three. Over the line. Ian Kidd was leading the rush and it's cleared. All the way back the other way. Grant Akins will pick it up. It was hooked. Play continues. It's cleared up the boards by LeBlanc for Leach. Wrong side pass for Lawless. Buchanan. Edgerton is blocked. Leach backhand flip and got free. And unfortunately for Cincinnati, it rolled on Goche. He's also at the end of his shift. He had nothing left to try and recover that one. Back come the Knights. Buchanan flip in from center. Sirowick around the boards. Sirowick picked off. Rough anticipated. Shot blocked by LeBlanc, and he was very smart in holding on with a couple of Atlanta Knights on the doorstep. But that time, good anticipation. Ruff just beating Sirona the puck. Well, there's been a lot of good scoring chances. Ruff was able to uh, corral a puck that Sirona was able to get by here. He pokes it free, takes a shot, and really a quick wrist shot. Went through, almost went through LeBlanc's pads. And again, that's what uh, Atlanta's been doing all night is they've been getting guys going for rebounds, guys going to the net, and they're going to get some turnovers, they're going to get some breaks by guys still keep going to the net. And LeBlanc had to be very sharp on that play. I continue to be impressed with Atlanta's speed. Speed, something.
sometimes can hurt you if you have inexperience like Atlanta does. A lot of second-year players, but in their case, it's helped them out a lot as we look at Jason Ruff. Seven goals this year, and part of the crowd watching here at the Cincinnati Gardens. So far enjoying this one. Had a rough start, though, Cyclones fans did to this. Watched their team trail 2-0 early in period one. Here's Buchanan on the right side. Quick touch passing by Atlanta. LaRouche dumping it in. Left wing side, Ruff overskated it. Kept in by Julia. LaRouche being held from behind. Cerrone in there. Cyclones work it out. Lawless, not superstitious, wearing number 13, obviously. Brings it in over the line. Shot taken was blocked. Knights will get a break here. Ruff. Two on two over the line. Jason Ruff got around one. Late in front of the score. And Stan Drulia has the hat trick, and we're only in the second period. A very, very, very pretty goal. Drulia, another seemed empty net. He's been in the right place at the right time. Uh, Jason Ruff with a tremendous play, a two-on-one. Gets a turnover in his own zone. Comes in two-on-one. Makes a wonderful play over. And Drulia, all he has to do is tap it into the open side. So a very good play by Jason Ruff. A kid with a really good, for a big kid, he's got great hands. He makes a super pass. The block really has no chance of that. And that's what's going to happen. You know, you you start putting some pressure on, you get caught on a two-on-one, and when they convert like that, it really hurts. And uh, it's really taking the stride out of the game right now. So Atlanta, working as hard as ever, gets the go-ahead goal. Cincinnati has not led in this one at all. Still 7.40 to go. Second period. Centering pass by the Cyclones. Off the boards. Riche, top of the right circle. Around behind the net. He wanted Baralt. Gets by. Left point kept alive, and it's gloved easily by Greenlay. He'll hold on to be a face-off coming up when action returns to the Cincinnati Guards, but Stan Drulia already has three goals. Well, not only does Stan Drulia have three goals, but he has all of Atlanta's scores. Drulia and Atlanta lead 3-2 over Cincinnati. Cyclones here at home are not enjoying the home ice advantage. Shot in now by Brent Gretzky. Behind the net it goes. Picked up by Riche. Stefan Riche giving it up on the left wing side. Back the other way, Gord Hines. On the flip, Greenlay is there. Leaving it off behind the net. Roachfort tied up by Baralt. Help on its way, very high stick it should be. And a penalty coming up here. And it's on Miller.
try to make a hard pass. There's a lot of easy plays to make, and Hines tried to make one there. He couldn't get it through. Goche, lead pass off the stick of Biggs. He'll try to center it. He's their team captain. Deflected free to Lawless. Lawless back now for Biggs. Out at the point. Big shot taken in his glove. Greenlay did well because it looked like it was deflected on its way in. Well, that's a, that's a better shot there to take. I mean, there's some traffic in front, and that's what he's got to do. We look at the penalty killing percentage here. Cincinnati with the best penalty killing, and of course, Atlanta with the second one at 83. Oh, anytime you're over 80%, you're in really, really good shape. And both these clubs have got excellent penalty killing. They do it differently. Atlanta's a little more aggressive. Uh, they tend to chase a little more, whereas Cincinnati stays more in a little box. And here is Miller waiting to get back on. He's only got 19 seconds left. He'd like to get back up there as soon as he can. And really, the power play is a lot longer than two minutes. By the time he gets out, you're always adding five or six seconds. So it's important that Miller gets out there as quickly as he can at the end of this power play. So many times you see a goal scored right as that penalty is over. It's not counted as a power play, but it really was an advantage. Right circle. Sirowick in front. It's deflected. Behind the net it goes. Biggs leaving it off. Gauthier holding. Biggs deep in the circle. Right across. Sirowick broke late. Still kept it alive behind the net. Pass. Gauthier side of the cage in front. Again, a tough pass. Sirowick blasts it high. And it came right out in front. And why to Biggs? You noticed earlier today at practice how active the boards were. That last one was very active. That one came right back out in front. And the goaltending, uh, that's where home ice advantage comes in, in real handy. And I'm sure LeBlanc knows that it's going to come up. But I don't think Greenlay knew it was going to come out that quick. I don't think anybody knew. Here's Lalas, the shot saved by Greenlay. Who's playing big in goal at 6-3, 2-10. Right side. Back the other way. Long shot. Long by LeBlanc. Shot taken on that far wing side by McDougal. 4 9 remaining here in the second period. The Fanometer's making noise, but right now Cincinnati's down by one at home. Why the well, it's a young Atlanta team, Bernie, but they are showing a lot of poise here on the road. They maintain that one-goal lead. They're playing very well, and they keep taking the play. They're, they keep getting the puck deep. Their defense are standing up, and they're doing all the right things. Uh, they really are in much better control of this game than we thought they were going to be, especially when Cincinnati's second period is always their best. They haven't scored a goal yet, and this is when they used to do all their scoring. Off the draw. It's taken. Long-distance shot by Rivers goes wide. Behind the net. Still there. Akins will pick it up. Third all the way back into the neutral zone. Back over the line, Atlanta. Edgerton shooting it. And LeBlanc did well to hold on to that one with Campo in front. There again we called. We talked about going to the net. Campo is standing right in front of LeBlanc and looking for a rebound. They're hungry to score goals right now. Uh, if you go to the net, sooner or later the puck's going to bounce loose and you're going to capitalize on it. And that's something, maybe it's the young legs or maybe it's just the enthusiasm. And I'm sure that they're talking on the bench. Uh, these guys are supposed to score all the goals. Uh, we're school, you know, they're ahead right now. They've got three goals already. They, they, they beat this period, one nothing. Uh, they really are, are continuing to go to the net. 3.47 remaining here in the second period, a period that the Cyclones have owned at home and away, doubling the opposition in scoring. Over the line, Sharon into the corner. Edgerton tries to center it out. Another one of the underrated players for the Knights, number 14, Edgerton. Hitting picks up. Knights jump in behind the net. Here's Goche. Off the boards for Leach. Taken by Campo, and he shoots in behind the net. This is the first of three games in three nights for Atlanta, but they're well rested. They haven't played since the weekend. They won twice at home against Kansas City. Meanwhile, this Cincinnati team played on Wednesday night. Here's Gauthier. Dropping it off. Big shot taken. Saved by Greenlee. He just let that one hit him, and it came right out. Again, they're letting him see the puck all the time. They're standing up, and they're long shots. Sorolic picks it up. Cincinnati coming back. Goche has Leach. Jamie Leach fires it wide. All the way around. And it went upstairs out of play. You watch the name of Leach and you see him down the right side. You have to think of his father who played with Bobby Clark. And he wore the same number, didn't he? 27. Yes, he did. And he scored a lot of goals. A tremendous player as we look at the next game that will be televising. Kansas City versus Milwaukee next Saturday, January the 15th. And remember how close in the standings, Kansas City right behind Milwaukee, who was right behind Atlanta. So you can't really separate those 
three teams in the Midwest Division. Well, you know, there's so much parity in the International Hockey League right now. It's, it's really wonderful hockey to watch because every game means so much, and every team is really has to be up. If you have a little lapse, uh, you could be trailing instead of you going first place and come out in third. So uh, exciting hockey, and that's the way the game should be played. You can tell the parity by how many shootouts they've gone to this year. So many games have ended up tied after regulation. Don't say that, though, to Gina Briaco. They're 0 for 8 in the shootout. 6 and 4 are the Cyclones record, and that's really the difference in points. It's really 8 points difference between these two teams, but 6 of them have come via the shootout. In the end, that's got to be worth a lot of points and maybe a place or two in the standings for some club at the end of the year. A rolling puck and LeBlanc settles. And it could end up knocking someone right out of the playoffs at the end of the year. Hines chasing it, centering. It's blocked all the way to the near side. Atlanta continues to be the harder working team tonight. Into the corner it goes. Knights take it out. Around the boards behind the net. Passed out of the right circle. Intercepted. Cyclones lead pass. They try to find an open man. That's Baralt who fires it in. Greenlay will leave it there. Approaching two minutes left here in period two. Riche keeps it alive. Right out in front. Nobody else to help out LeBeau. Delayed penalty being called here. And it's going against the Cyclones. So Atlanta will get a power play. Oh, wait a minute. He blew the whistle there when Atlanta had possession. Atlanta's goalie was leaving. This is going to be interesting. Atlanta's goalie was leaving. Atlanta kept going. I didn't see anything else. They do have the Riche penalty. Unless well, he went over to Gina Briaco and Briaco is nodding, so whatever explanation must have worked, but I don't know what it was. What I think happened, JP, is you have to wait till the goalie gets within 10 feet of the bench before you can send a player. That's and right. I think the player left early, and the faceoff will be in center ice. Uh, I think that's what happened. That's, that's what he right. told Ubriaco. Yeah. The guy left too early. And I'm wondering too if that's part of the confusion with the bench on the opposite side from the other side. First reaction. And you want to get that extra jump. I bet that is what happened because I didn't see anything else that happened out there. But now you've got Riche sitting out. What a great situation for Atlanta. Well, they could take it with, with less than two minutes left in the period here. They could take a two-goal lead into the uh, third period, which is always very, very difficult to, to come back from. And you look at Atlanta, uh, when they're leading after the second period, they're 14-0-5, so that's pretty impressive. So uh, I'm sure they'd like to get an extra goal before they go into the third. Here's Drulia. He's got three goals already to the right side. It's deflected behind the net. Centering pass. Drulia tried to go short side. And LeBlanc is down. He may have been hit. All of a sudden, he just went down. Welcome the referee over there to have a word or two with Ray LeBlanc as Bernie Federico heads downstairs. We'll be chatting with Len Berry at the end of this period. Going to be number 10, Ian Kidd. is an interesting story. I'll tell you, the reason is that he played in only 23 games last year, Ian Kidd, and he was named the Cyclones' best defenseman. So he had a really impressive 23 games. Here's a replay. Maybe we can see it here. LeBlanc at the short side. Oh, head collision. Good night. So the block is okay. Maybe take two aspirin and call the doctor in the morning. He's fine though. LaRouche in for the draw. He'll win it. Left point Rivers. Power play on here for Atlanta. 137 left on it. This could run into the next period unless, of course, Atlanta scores. Here's Rivers, 60 feet out. Top of the circle. Julia gives it right back. Right point view. Cannon shot went wide. And it's tied up in the mesh behind the net. Maybe a face off coming up. With a minute 14 remaining in period number two and 124 on the penalty to Stefan Riche. Face off will be coming up to the left side of Ray LeBlanc in goal. Akins and Kidd out there to try to kill off this penalty on Stefan Riche. One of six All Stars for Cincinnati. Off the draw, Lawless picks it up, picks it behind the net. Paul Lawless smacks it off the boards, and he'll kill some time here. 105 left in the period. 115 left on the penalty. On Riche. Back in his own end. This is Sean Rivers. Two goals on the season. Leads the defenseman, though, with points with 15. Rough along the near boards. He'll get it back behind the net. Jason Ruff, though, bothered by Kidd. Here's Stan Drulia. 39 seconds left in the period. Behind the net. Atlanta still on the power play. Back for Drulia. He's got three. Can he get four? They'll have enough time to do it, certainly. We've got another period to go. Rivers to the center point area to Buchanan. A bouncing pocket. It came out of the zone. That'll cost Atlanta. As 
Cincinnati dumps it down ice. Atlanta should still have one more scoring chance here. Down to 18 seconds left in the period. Buchanan to center ice. Gretzky, a careful pass. Medill over the line. Medill joined by Rivers. Snapshot, and it's knocked down by LeBlanc. Six seconds left. Kept alive. Edgerton out at the point. Rivers, right side, long shot up high and wide of LeBlanc. Horn sounds, ending a very solid period for the Atlanta Knights. And even though we told you before that the second period all year has belonged to Cincinnati, not tonight. Give credit to this young Atlanta Knights team. They've come in, they've led on a couple of different occasions here. They led one and two to nothing early in the first period. Saw the Cyclones come back to tie it at two and then scored the only goal in period number three to take a 3-2 lead. Stick around. When we come back, Bernie Federko will chat with Len Berry downstairs. But for now, it's a 3-2 Atlanta Knights lead. This is the IHL, and you're watching on Prime Network. Good hockey game for you here on Prime Network, and we still have another period to go. Atlanta on the road leading Cincinnati 3-2. One of Cincinnati's hot guns has not gotten on track tonight. That's number nine, Len Berry. He's standing by downstairs with Bernie Federko. We'll go to Bernie. Thanks, JP. Indeed he is. Len Berry, a very, very good hockey player, but uh, the second period is not the normal second period for the Cincinnati uh, team, is it? Well, they're doing well. Uh, good job of containing us right now. Our offense maybe isn't going as well as we'd like, but... You know, hopefully we can maybe catch a pass here in the third period and get in there and get some more opportunities on this goalie. He's playing well. We got to, We can go a little better, though. Len, 19 goals already this year, only six at home. Uh, it really amazes me. Uh, I got a couple at home last games, and uh, my wife wasn't here, so she had to stay home tonight. So I, I don't know why that is. Uh, I just, you know, maybe more relaxed on the road or whatever. I've always kind of liked playing on the road a little better, but hopefully I can pick it up a little more at home and help out tonight with a couple here in the third period. Len, you've had great numbers the last couple of years. You've got great numbers again this year. Is it disappointing not being up with Florida when the numbers are so great? Well, you know, it's, it's, there's no question it's disappointing, but they're they're playing really well right now, and it's a catch-220 situation. You come to an expansion team hoping that you're going to get uh, an opportunity, but they're playing so well. They're in a playoff spot right now, so you can't really expect them to change anything. You know, maybe I'll have to go somewhere else to get a chance, but if not, uh, you know, I'm happy to be here, and you know, hopefully we can just keep her going and come back with a win tonight. What kind of words of wisdom did you guys just get uh, from uh, Dennis DeRose in between periods? Well, uh, we got to pick it up a little bit. We're not playing hard right now. We're kind of playing a little bit at the perimeter. I think everyone, we, you know, we're unbeaten in 14, and maybe we're taking a little lax. Hopefully we'll come out here in the third period and pull it out. It'll be a nice win for us, so hopefully we can. Has it been surprising that you guys have gone 14 games without losing? Uh, uh, not really. We play, we're playing really well. we got a great hockey team. Uh, we beat some good teams. There's a lot of good teams in this league. Maybe that's the only thing that surprises us, but we found ways to win. We always haven't played well, but we found a way to win, and that's the main thing that at the end of the night, you've got the W on the board. Ray LeBlanc playing well tonight, but Pokey Reddick is a real big part of your hockey club, isn't he? Uh, sure. Pokey Reddick's uh, you know, the best goalie in this league, best goalie I've ever seen. And you know, There's another guy who could maybe, you know, if he, Johnny Van Beesburg wasn't playing so well, he'd get a shot up there, but you know, it's it's right now Ray LeBlanc's doing a well, uh, great job tonight. But when Polk's in there, you know, it's a, just a little different era in there. He's very confident, and, he, and you know, if he wants to shut you down, you might have a tough time getting it by him. Well, good luck for the rest of the night tonight. I'm sure you guys have got some more goals in store there. Good luck for the rest of your and the rest of your career. Oh, thanks, Bernie. Thanks a lot. Should be an exciting third period. It's only one goal game, JP. So anything can happen in this next period. That's right, Bernie. Cincinnati obviously needs some goals, but they also have to figure out a way to stop, neutralize, you pick a word, Stan Drulia, because so far, Drulia has all three goals, including one shorthanded. He has now scored 21 on the year. Atlanta leads 3-2. to two. Highlights and stats come from the Garden, so come back with us. Cincinnati Garden, that's the place. Uh, hello, Puckett, with Bernie Federko. I'm John Paul Delacavre. Yes, they do sell those here in uh, Cincinnati. You and I didn't measure our heads to get one of those, and I, I don't think either one of us would look good with it. I think Stan Drulia would look good with it tonight because he's looking good no matter what he does. He's gotten three goals. And he's played very well. We talked earlier at the beginning of the show that he was their leader. He was their offensive leader, the captain of their club, the guy that they look for leadership. And if three goals isn't leadership, then nothing is. But he certainly has played very well. But here is his third goal. Now Jason Ruff makes an excellent play on this. 
It's a two-on-one. He makes a slides a pass across through the crease to Drulia, who has the open side, who makes no mis mistake. The block has no chance on it, and it's three to two. So look at the other angle again. This is the goals you dream of, going to the net, and they've been going to the net all night. Drulia went to the net. He gets a good pass, and, and that's really the key to Atlanta's uh, offense so far. They've been going to the net. They keep putting pressure on LeBlanc, and he can only make so many stays, and that's something that DeRozier talked about. Again, you can't give up so many chances. And at the other end, Greenlay's played very well. Here he stops a backhander, and again, that is what Cincinnati is not doing. They're not going to the net enough. Uh, they're trying to get something started, but I think the Atlanta defense is really, really doing a lot of good work in there. Not a big scoring summary for you. Only one goal. Julia got it at 12.08. Ruff had the assist to give Atlanta a lead by a score of 3-2. to two. And Atlanta has the edge in terms of the scoring. They also have an edge in shots on goal. And Bernie, if you want to be fair, they've been a better team so far after two periods. Yes, they have, but it's only a one-goal game. And anytime you get into a one-goal game, they both have got great records when they hold the lead. Uh, in fact, neither team has lost when they have the lead. So Atlanta, 14-0-5. The shootouts has been their problem, and I think that's what Cincinnati would like to do. If they have, if worst comes to worst, they do want to go into a shootout. And Atlanta definitely does it. They are 0-8 for 8 in the shootouts. They're bolstered by the fact that Greenlay was in goal the last time they won here. And again, not many teams win in this building. No, they haven't been successful. In fact, Greenlay's the only other goalie. There's only two goalies that have shut out or have, have got wins in this building in regulation time other than the shootout. So uh, it's going to be a tough battle for Cincinnati to come back, but if anybody can come back, this crowd is a large crowd. Uh, they're pumped up. One goal for Cincinnati could really get the ball rolling. Cincinnati has not led in this one at all. It has been Atlanta all the way. They led it 1-0, then 2-0. Cincinnati came back in the first period, scored two more, and then it was Atlanta getting the only goal in period number two. Stick with us. Still a lot more to come your way from Cincinnati. mentioned too at the start we didn't tell you that Riche still had a few seconds left on his penalty but that went right by the boards Soroic clearing it up ice Soro now to Biggs right wing pass just off the mark but Lawless will gather it in nice shift gave it up for Biggs and it's blocked Biggs again flipped it in front it was deflected a couple of times LaRouche and now the Knights bring it back out. Not a good start for Atlanta this period. Not the way they want to be checking. They're allowing two-on-ones and three-on-twos down the other end. You know, they're going to have to open things up a little bit. They need that tire. They need to get the crowd involved, and uh, that's what they're trying to do. They're going to maybe start taking some chances. Maybe a little early to start taking chances. Woo! Drulia chasing this down the right wing side. Stan Drulia, skill, speed, finesse, and taking his man to the boards there to add a little extra to it. Len Berry chasing this puck. He'd love to get a, at least one. He had two here the other night, but most of his goals, as you pointed out, like four other players, their top four guys, more points on the road. Very unusual, but it shows what kind of talent this team does have. Very unusual because you usually get checked on the road. Uh, you can match lines. The coach has the last change, and it's very unusual to see all four guys because you know who is the checking line and who's the scoring line. This is a team that's 26-1 and one, going back to last year in their last 27 road games. Near wing boards. Knights trying to get it. Taken away the other side. Down the left wing. Here's LeBeau. Two on two. LeBeau in front. The pass. The backhand. And it was stopped. The stick of Greenleg came out and blocked for all. Tuck hit again. Hitting game is picking up. Tuck was the man taken out by Baral. And now other players going down. Baral keeps it in. We're going to have a lively third period. Another 16.50 to go. It's still 3-2 Atlanta. Knights take it. Bring it over the line. Left there for Gretzky. Gretzky the shot. Looked out nicely by LeBlanc. This one's rolling under the Asher. Sent behind the net. Knights still have it. Centers it right out of the slot. Nobody there. Glenn Berry takes over. Fortunately for Cincinnati, the Knights didn't have anyone there. Leach checked the referee. Welcome. Does that count as a check? Fans who's taking stats. <laughs> well, if the fans were, they don't count it. They just grew. Welcome. Back on that far wing side. Nice spinning move. Back come the Knights. Edgerton, the shot. Deflected wide. Along the near boards, we get a penalty coming up here. And they're speaking. Walkham is talking to Leach down below us. And the last thing you want to take is a bad penalty here. If you're Cincinnati, you're already down one, but it appears as if that's what's happened. And the way he took it is not the way to do it. It's not the right place. And you take a, it's almost like you call a selfish penalty. He didn't need to do it. And he better get in the box. He's going to end up getting another two. But uh, not a good not a good time to take a slot. So we're going to take a look at it if we can. There he is. And he's not too happy. Maybe he had himself for taking a penalty. He just 
gets what he does is, is he ends up getting spun around and it really is very questionable call for him I'm sure because has really good play um, on the play by Bill McDougal to spin him around and he kind of got away with the spin and uh, Mr. Lynch should not have taken the whack at him like he did. Well, the block will have to come up big here. There's Gina Briaco on the Atlanta Knights bench. There's Atlanta's record when they lead after two. Very impressive when you consider, again, it's a young team. Yes, and on the other hand, Cincinnati's 4-5-1, uh, and one, so they've had trouble when they haven't got into the third period with the lead. Near side, the shot taken wide of LeBlanc, just wide by Sharon. Hard play still on for Atlanta for 147. Along the far wing side, they were trying to find Edgerton, who was open on the near side. Ian Kidd can't clear out, got some help, and it just barely clears the zone. Sharon will pick it up. Cincinnati's magic number, four. When they score four goals, they're 21 wins and four losses only in the shootout. They've not lost in regulation, but they're two goals away from that figure now. Right now, they've settled for just three. Tough hit along the boards, Greenlaw. And now Goche picks it up. They're shorthanded, here they come, the Cyclones. Two on three, Kidd fakes, and oh, I never heard the whistle, but apparently it came back in the offside. I never heard it with the roar of the crowd, the anticipation of a potential shorthanded tying goal. Well, Goche was clearly offside by at least a stride, and that's unfortunate because there's Kidd, good chance there, two on one, he just got a little anxious and cheated a little bit, took an extra stride, got over that blue line too early. But we've already had one shorthanded goal tonight by Atlanta, and right now it's a difference in the game, so Cincinnati, I'm sure, would like to counter that shorthanded with one of their own, uh, but it's going to be tough. If he looks like Reggie Leach, there's a reason. We told you at the top his father used to play with the Flyers, Bobby Clark, the general manager now of the Florida Panthers, was his sentiment. And Reggie Leach scored a ton of goals in the NHL. Behind the net, LeBlanc. Stick hails, it's lost behind the net. The Knights get it, set it in front, off the pipe. You could hear it way up here. LaRouche was unlucky. That could have been a big goal. That could have doubled the Atlanta lead. A nice play by Jason Rupp again. All alone, LaRouche, and he was not able to sneak it by. It hits the right post. Not it. And it doesn't matter if it hits the post as long as it doesn't go in. LeBlanc. At least that's Cincinnati's way of looking at it. LeBlanc almost hurt himself there. Time left for the power play is 30 seconds. Atlanta coming back on the attack. Here's Sean Rivers on the left wing side. Across the line, Julia still with it. Lost it behind the cage. There's Stefan Richet getting some help. Cleared along the boards and out of the zone. Bodies collide right in front of the Cyclone bench. Here's Richet. Moralt over the line. He has Barry in the off wing. Lynn Barry right back. Moralt save. Green and score. Got the feet. 
feet initially from Goche. All the way back for Ian Kidd, number 10. Now to Aikens, number 3. Left wing, Goche. Right back, shot by Leach's wide. He didn't miss by much. No, he certainly didn't. A quick wrist shot, real good shot there. Behind the net, Atlanta takes a 12 and a half to go. Third period, tied at three. Edgerton, drop pass. Goche, read it. Atlanta gets it right back in the neutral zone. Nice stick handling. Great stuff, in fact. And then going down was Medill. They got, they got to play for a break now. There's only 12 minutes left. Play for a break. And, you know, if you don't get it, go to the shootout if you have to. What Atlanta hasn't done yet is trail. They've had to lead the whole way through. Let's see if they can get it back again on the road in Cincinnati. Julia, one of those people counted on to get it back. He's got three goals for Atlanta, all three. In a 3-3 tie. Julia behind the net, centered it. LeBlanc stopped it, and some of the thought it was in. LaRouche thought it was in. He had to stick up, but I never saw the puck go through. And the light never came up. Most of the scary ones, uh, all Julia did was try to chip to the front. LeBlanc was holding his, his ground on the far post, but he wasn't able. It almost looked like he almost knocked it back behind him. It, was, it stayed on the side of the net. I've seen a lot of goals go in that way. Yes. And it's a very good play because the goalie doesn't have eyes behind his head. It's kind of hard to see where it is. And you chip it in front of him, it comes through a lot of time. Even the players, a guy like Wayne Gretzky, tries to even shoot it off a pad from behind the net. That was Julia, who we just showed you. LaRouche. Eight straight games with an assist earlier this year. We mentioned the 11-game scoring streak. He's been steady. Here's Hayward on the rush. Lawless. Nice shifting. Lawless plays it in front, sticked away by Greenlay. But they can't clear out of the zone. Now finally it's pushed back. Sirola shoots in from center around the boards. Greenlay couldn't settle it down. Julia can't clear out yet. Biggs falling down over the stick of Julia. Kept it at the left point by Hines. Right side. Sirola has a shot and it's glove. And Greenlay will hold on. You know, J.C., what Cincinnati is doing for the first time in the game is going to the net now. Uh, on numerous occasions now, really, since they scored that goal, maybe got some life in their legs again, they're going to the net. Uh, they are the tired team. They've played a lot more hockey than Atlanta has over the last week. But they are really got some adrenaline flowing now. They're starting to go to the net as we look at uh, Biggs there, who is a guy that they're looking for. A lot of goals last year. Uh, he's coming around. He hasn't played that well at the start of the year, but he's coming. He's getting better. He's getting stronger. Uh, he had one of those career years, as he said, last year, but uh, he's a guy that's going to score some goals before the end of this year. Normally a slow starter. Second halves are always strong. Off the draw. Rivers around the boards. Hines battling. Four players jamming up. Played across. Reshake. Wiped away. Nice job by number 11, Mark Tardif. We may have hurt his shoulder in the process. He's going off, holding the shoulder. That was dropped, the left shoulder. Over the line. Here's Riche. Backhands it around the boards. Boral, who had the tying goal. Coming out, centering pass. Riche couldn't handle it. He was free in the slot. Riche in the corner. Leaves it for Boral. They try to find Boral again. It's taken away. Here's a break for Atlanta. Down the left wing side. Gretzky's drop pass. Not a good one. Hines intercepts, can't clear. Here's Miller, wide open, but he couldn't find his man. That was Edgerton. And back the other way comes Riche, dumps in from center. Well, Riche is like an extra forward out there, but he's got to be careful. He almost got caught there, and they almost did not almost ended up with a breakaway. Coming back the other way, Edgerton over the line, drops it off Medill. Wrist shot didn't get anything on it, but he gets the rebound. Oh, LeBlanc was looking the wrong way as Medill came around. LeBlanc very fortunate that he got back because he was going the wrong way. 9.58 left in the third. Will we see a shootout? You'll have to come back with us and find out. This is the IHL on Prime, and it's tied at three. Off the J. Won it. It's loose. Kept in at the right side. Ian Kidd centered it across. Nobody at the left circle. Backhanded in deeper behind the Knights' net. Around the boards, Jason Ruck played some at Peoria last year. On the clear, all the way back the other way into the Cyclone zone. Aikens chased by LaRouche. Kid off the boards. Taken now by Gochin. One of the high scores last year with the Cleveland Lumberjacks. He'll be one of the Cyclones top guys this year. There are your shots on goal for period. Cincinnati doubling Atlanta here in the third. 8-4. Back in the other way over the line, Buchanan, who had two assists. Sent in by LaRouche. Around the board, Cyclones clearing it out. On the left wing side, here's Cerrone. Cerrone tied up, dumped. No penalty, Rivers got a break. Behind the net, Greenlay came out. Lost the battle with it. And now played on the left side to Jason Ruff. Tried to clear it out, and he did over the outstretched hand of Cerrone. And Atlanta is doing exactly what we talked about. They're
They're just dumping it out, getting it out there, playing for a tie right now at the very worst. They're looking for one break, and there's, that's a smart way to look at it. But you know they don't want to go to the shootout at 0-8. I think Gina Briaco had the best line when I asked him why they're having so much trouble on the shootout. He said he blames the back checkers. They're not doing their job, and there is Gina Briaco. He has at least another 8 8 to go in this one. Come back with us. Ready to go here in the third period. And it's tied at three. The draw won by the Knights. Sharon fires it. It goes high and beyond LeBlanc. Kept alive, though, by the Knights. And now cleared out of the zone. All the way back the other end. Sharon played it across. He was looking for Corey Cross. Taken by Biggs. Cyclones captain's backhander goes into the Knights' end. Sharon, far wing. Trying to play it across. It's deflected. Oh, offside. Two lines. Off that deflection. Google took one step too early. He might have had a breakaway, but he put himself offside. The puck did squirt loose, and he was just waiting for the puck to cross the line before he taking that step. But his, his one leg was in the air, and if your one leg is on the other side of the blue line, you lift your back foot up, you're considered offside. So that's what happened. Next telecast, as we said earlier, Kansas City versus Milwaukee next Saturday, January the 15th from Milwaukee. And we're looking forward to that 80-degree weather. Uh, golf what are you talking about 80 degrees? <laughs> well, we're looking forward to it. doesn't oh, mean it's going to oh, be it. Okay. 80 okay. degree weather and uh, sure. uh, suntan lotion. Is yeah. Milwaukee sunny and yeah. warm in the winter? I'd look forward to it too, but it's not going to happen. <laughs> Where's Milwaukee anyway? Uh, it's up a little in the cold area. Up north. Only cold in your mind, JP. They're leading the league in attendance. They'll have another good crowd next week. Here come the Cyclones. Rich shot saved by Greenlay. Take it right back the other way. Miller shoots in wide. Picked up and a shot and a score. Oh, LeBlanc a caught sitting in the back of the net. And the Knights made him pay for it. They get the go-ahead goal for the upteenth time. Well, Edgerton made a real, real nice shot here. And that's, you know, one of the oldest plays in hockey is dump the puck off the end boards. And that's exactly what Miller does. All he does, he plays the angle exactly perfect diagonal, really a pass or clear in off the end boards. You're going to see it here. He just shoots it in. Miller dumps it in. It comes off the end boards, which are, we said earlier, real fast. And Edgerton, Edgerton just fires it, and it goes in between Ray LeBlanc's pads. And that's really a hard stop for a goalie. You're looking the puck come out from one angle. It comes from one side. comes off the corner funny. And it was a real good shot. And again, Atlanta's back in the lead. And now let's see how they play as Gretzky takes the long shot. LeBlanc knocks it down. That puck came out very quickly, as you said, and LeBlanc had caught sitting back there, and Edgerton got all of it, his 11th of the year. Miller had one assist. We'll check it out. I believe they awarded another. Here's Hines. And now Cincinnati needs one more to tie. They've been doing this all night. How many times can they climb that hill? Cyclones fans hope it's once more. Four players jam in the corner. Make it five. Cyclones dig it out. Centering pass picked off. Knights coming back. Here's that counterattack. It's three on one. Ruff drops it off. LaRue's coming in. The shot was saved by LeBlanc. That could have been the game right there. And Atlanta scored. Nice play by LeBlanc. He came out to cut it down, and really LaRouche had nowhere else but to take a shot. He couldn't. He tried to. He wanted to pass to Drulia the whole way, but uh, played very well both by the defenseman and the goaltending. By the time LaRouche was in, it appeared he was too deep to make yeah. a good play. He tried to go up top, and he wasn't able. Once you get in too tight, you, there's no way you can get it straight up. <laughs> off the boards, Ruff. Hope checks it away. Ian Kidd picking it up. 6.05 remaining in the third. Now it's 4-3. Atlanta Knights off the boards. Picked up. Medill. Again, you've got to be impressed with the resolve of this Knights team. Each time, they've seen composure go down just a slight bit. When Cincinnati came back, they've gutted it out and got that lead right back. Here's Gauthier trying to split. Gauthier with a lock. The shot taken was blocked. Good block by Sharon. Greenlaw and Campo have each other tied up away from the play. Back the other way. McDougal. Campo did well to stay onside. I thought someone else was offside, though. Medill, no call. Along the left wing board, Cyclones can't clear it out. Back behind LeBlanc. Miscommunication, but Sirolik picks it up. Right side pass. And now Sirolik joins the rush. Intercepted, dumped back in, the smart play by the Knights. Well, there's the standing up defense again. They're inside center ice. They're not backing up, and they're just throwing it back in, killing the clock right now. Game plan working for the Knights. Two players try to bat it, they miss. Here's a shot, knocked down in front. You could have put that one on a blooper highlight. Two guys try to bat the puck down, and they both missed. Gretzky leaving it off. Shot taken.
Hagen was wide. Off a block. Here's Miller shooting it in. Knocked down and then carried out, literally, by Hines. Intercepted. Gretzky, good back checking, and then he gave it away. Biggs couldn't get it over the line. Atlanta's done very well tonight in terms of recovery. One guy makes a mistake, someone else has come back. Sometimes the guy that lost it originally gets it back. Well, they really pick up their wings uh, real well. You know, they play such a European wide-open style, but once they get the lead, as uh, Ubriaco told us this morning, they go back to a North American style where you pick up your wings, and it's just hard work. Checking is hard work, and that's what they're doing. They're really working hard. It's not glamorous, but it's glamorous when you win. Well, punching the face is never glamorous, but you can afford to take it if you win. You I was going to say, when you're in the receiving end, no. <laughs> Here's Kitt, shooting it from center, it's blocked. Ubriaco watches as his team tries to continue with Jason Ruff in the corner, up 4-3. In the corner, LaRouche is checked. Kitt coming in late, trying to poke at it. Oh, the Knights get it back. Ruff comes out in front, the shot, and it's saved by the block off McKenna. Behind the net, LaRouche. Look at this hard work. The wraparound was blocked. The Knights just continue to outwork the Cyclones tonight. This is just great effort. Here's Drulia. Behind the net. Flipped around the boards. You know, the other night, maybe they could say that the Cyclones were flat. Here you've got to say Atlanta's outworking Cincinnati. They really, they really are. It's, it's really incredible how much they were outworking them. And you'd think once they got back that they would really a lot better. Cyclones, a team that have won seven straight on the road, having a harder time lately at home. Just barely won the other night against Peoria, and now they're struggling, trying to come from behind, trailing here 4-3 with 3.15 to go in their home rink. Atlanta, though, give them credit. They've stuck with a game plan. Off the boards pass. And this is the hardest time now. you got three minutes to go, and this is when it really gets tough. Over the line, three on three. Behind the net it goes. Knights. Trying to work it free. Medill with some good work. Took a cross check for his efforts. Pass. Bad one for Cincinnati. Now they get it back with Greenlaw. Near side Goche and that went for two lines. You were talking before about Chico Briaco and the combination North American European style. A lot of people may forget that he coached Italy in the World University Games where he won a medal. And he also coached Italy in the Olympics where he wasn't as fortunate. But he told me it was a great learning experience. He learned a lot. Always learns, he says, as a coach. You're telling me that man is Italian? Come, Come on. Come on. And he does a fine job. He's been around a long time, Genius Ben. He's a funny guy to talk to. He's got a lot of great one-liners and uh, has done a very good job with a young Atlanta team. Dennis Rosier, same way, a fine record, 124, 98, 15. I think he's going to add a lot more wins to that before the end of this year. You know, last year was his only losing year in seven years, and he brought back only two players from that team. They came in with a limited budget, as he said earlier. They couldn't sign a lot of the big free agents, so that they were behind the eight ball to start, but... They found out last year what it took to win, and now they are 29 points better than they were a year ago at this time. That's a phenomenal year-end turnaround. And as he said, last year he was a bad coach. This year he's good because they're winning. <laughs> That's right. He's probably coaching the same, but his players are better. Played across into the neutral zone for Ian Kidd down to 225. I'll say this for Cincinnati fans. Not many have headed for the parking lot. I see some now, but not a big exodus. 216 left. some ill feelings in the end. LaRouche did well to restrain himself there, maybe trying to look like the innocent guy. I'm not sure what actually started it, but one of the Atlanta players got hit by a puck that was flipped at the end. Well, it's going to be interesting what uh, the calls are on this one because Biggs gave an awful hard shot to uh, LaRouche out there right at the end of that play, even after the puck. So I don't know what he's going to call. He's going to try to keep this even, but Biggs... Uh, uh, looked like he was the aggressor on that one. It'll be interesting to see what kind of call we get here. Well, this is obviously a critical point. If one team gets a man advantage here, Biggs is already taking a seat, but the penalty box door on the night side is also open. And we look what happened with last week in Las Vegas. Uh, penalty in the last couple of minutes of the game for Las Vegas. They got a power play. Here it is. We're going to look at here. You're going to see the puck. The whistle went here after this puck was gloved ahead here. You're going to see, and Biggs just kind of flicks it and it ends up hitting someone, and it comes in here, and you're going to see oh, there Biggs giving LaRouche a cross-check here, and that's really interesting. Biggs penalties. Biggs is off. 
I didn't see who the Atlanta player was. Buchanan got it, uh, got the pen. He must have come in after LaRouche got knocked down, and he's the one that got the penalty. So uh, an even-up call that really, I guess, should happen uh, in this situation. When you've got a one-goal game, it's kind of really interesting that uh, you don't want to you know, sway the game to one side. It's been a great game the whole time. You don't want to give someone a, a call. And here we're going to have something interesting that you don't see very often. Here's going to a stick measurement. Obviously, Cincinnati has called this. They want... Uh, there's numerous rules about the stick. That little machine you're looking at is a stick that measures the width. It can measure the, the uh, curve on a stick. It looks like they've requested that they're going to measure the stick. The stick can only be, uh, I believe it's three inches wide, or four inches wide, and if that stick is any wider than that, they can get a penalty. I'm not exactly sure what, it's a half inch is the curve, and I think it's a four inch or a five inch width on the stick. And he's checking the width of it, and I think you have to request, you have to request whether you're requesting to measure the curve, the size of the curve, or the width of the stick, and the machine, if the, if the, the little gadget there, if the stick fits inside of it, yeah. then it's it's legal. If it doesn't fit inside the grooves, then it's illegal and it's a two-minute penalty. Right. But I don't know what he has ruled here. Uh, if Cincinnati called it, if it's not, if it's not illegal, Cincinnati would have to send someone into the box. If it's illegal, Atlanta will have a two-minute penalty. Dan Drury explaining things to Gina Riacco. Whatever it was, it looked pretty close. Yeah. They're gonna check it again. So it's it is close, obviously. They're going to check it yet another time. And the best way to look at this, whichever box opens, we're gonna know who gets a penalty. Yeah. It's illegal, it looks illegal, it looks like they're putting it away, yes. Now it's not going to the Hall of Fame, is it? God, I don't think so. Sean Rivers is the unlucky guy that, that gets caught. And you know, it's very unusual. I mean, a lot of a lot of players get really upset. I, I don't know if you remember watching the Stanley Cup final oh, yeah. last year. The dreaded Marley, Marty, Marty McSorley, McSorley syndrome uh, that happened when Jacques Demers called Marty McSorley on a legal stick late in the game in Montreal. I think it was game one of the Stanley Cup finals. For game two, Montreal was already game down one to nothing. They ended up Montreal. It, uh, McSorley's stick was illegal. Montreal went on the power play, scored the tying goal, and then ended up winning winning the game in overtime to even that series and really, really the turning point. So uh, it's very unusual to get a stick measured for width. Usually it's the curve that they measure, and this is very unusual. Let's talk about how gutsy this is. Cincinnati loses probably if they're wrong on this measurement with 2.15 to go because they would have a, a big a man down and before on exactly. this case. Then you're going to end up having to pull your goalie, and the best you're going to get is you're going to have a, a back even strength. So a very gutsy call, but, you know, it's one of those calls where you got nothing to lose. You feel that you're, you know, your team's not going, you're not getting a lot of good scoring chances. Do you play for one chance, or do you take a chance and, and uh, you know, go for broke? And uh, DeRozier, uh, obviously, you know, pick, chose to, to, to be gutsy, and he got the right call. But it was awful close because the times they measured that stick, it's very, very amazing how close that was. But uh, obviously Rivers is in the box and his stick is thrown away. And it's always one thing that I had. I always had, and it didn't happen very often during the regular season, but in the playoffs we always made sure we had one that we knew was going to be legal when it came down in the last couple minutes of a real close game. Welcome, everyone. There's 2.15 left. If you're just coming aboard, it's a 4-3 lead for Atlanta. But hold on, it's a power play. Coming up here, five on four. Cincinnati trying to tie it yet again. They've tied it twice already. 1.48 left in the man advantage. Two minutes left in the game or in regulation time. If it's tied, we would go to the dreaded, if you're an Atlanta fan, shootout with their 0-8. This is when that dreaded power play hopefully will come through for Cincinnati. And again, the second best penalty killing in the league by Atlanta. So uh, it's still anybody's game here. Riche giving it up to Hines. Hines over the line. Plays it around the boards. Cincinnati may get to this. Moralto couldn't find the handle. Behind the net. Just getting back up was Barry. Trying to get his bearings. Out to Hines at the left point. 110 up in the power play, and the net was dislodged. And they're claiming that Greenlay did it. That's what Barry is saying. Greenlay, or maybe a defenseman. Greenlay's big, and at 6'3", he could easily back into it accidentally, but would that ever be a gutsy call? Well, I think uh, Mr. Barry has cause concern because I think uh, Mike Greenlay did just kind of back in and stand up and pull it off the, off the, the net. So you can see here, he's, let's take a look if he does. I think he backs in. Uh, no, he didn't wasn't. It was a Burl. good call. Burl did knock it off. That surprised me. 
Maybe Greenlee will get, he'll try it the next time and get away with it. You'd probably <laughs> surprised Barry if he saw the replay because he was sure yeah. that Greenlee did it. I was too. 108 left here. I wish we had more time. I'd really love to talk to you more about that stick situation because there are a lot of guys that I'm sure the sticks are not quite right and coaches know usually somebody in each team. And there's a lot of sticks in both those benches that are being changed right now. <laughs> I guarantee you. <laughs> Gene Riak was looking at his bench and maybe the other team to see if he could catch somebody. 123 left here in the game and 105 left here. Here is Riche. Comes out in front. It's loose. Still loose to back here to save Greenlee. And right there was Barry's best chance of the night to swat home the rebound. We were talking before about that illegal stick. It was Sean River's stick. It was set off. Two minutes uh, power play on. Basically, you can't use the stick. It didn't conform to the rules. Here's Richie with a nice play. Walks back in front, tries to stuff it. Puck bounces loose, and he's able to turn around backhanded. And a big save by Mike Greenlee. With Len Berry standing right on the crease, trying to whack it home. And again, here we go back to the timeouts. And there's still plenty of time with a minute and 11 seconds left. Whether or not DeRose will pull uh, Ray LeBlanc yet, I don't know. But they've still got plenty of time. you got the power play for 56 seconds. They've got a minute and 11 on the clock. So, again, what Cincinnati has to do is they have to get control of the puck. This is when the faceoffs are so important. But what Cincinnati can't do is they can't panic. With a minute and 11 seconds left, they got plenty of time to move it around. You know, you get plenty of time on the clock to uh, go for one big shot. You don't want to just throw it away and go for a, a you know, a, a, a stupid pass or a stupid shot that no one's going to the net. But again, here's what you want to get if he's going to pull his goalie. You no, know, he's not doing it, which I agree with him, is that you still got plenty of time in the last 30 seconds to pull your goalie and get another face off. I'm not sure. I think he's pulling He is. You know what? I, I think one of the reasons is probably the power play has not done well this year. So why not take the chance here? If they had the first, second, third power play, they'd probably do that. Well, I'm, again, here, I, I, I'm against this in this situation because of the, the fact that there's still plenty of time on the clock. The bad part about this is all Atlanta has to do, if they win the draw, it's just blasted. They're not going to get called for icing. And this is a lot of times what happens that you, you really you know, don't have to worry about icing. Everyone's on their feet in Cincinnati. Face off to the right side of Greenlee. Barry and Miller. Again, it's Miller for the important draws. And he may be going out. He is. He apparently moved before it. Linesman waves him out. Now he's going to plead his case to the referee. And he won't find a sympathetic ear there. It's another right-hander, though, coming in. McDougal. McDougal. Off the draw. At the point. Riche keeping it in. Left side. Right across. And it hops over the stick. Kept alive. Now behind the net. Send this crowd into ecstasy. We wouldn't have hurt ourselves for about 10 minutes if we scored there. That may have been the uh, save of the night so far, but there's still 53 seconds. But again, LeBeau got a quick shot again. Pass came up from behind the net. He just snapped it real quickly to the far side. Greenlee was able to get his, his blocker, I believe, on it. Here, we'll take a look at it here. Again, Barry just fires it out. Yes, he's able to get his blocker on it and then cover it up. Uh, with a lot of traffic in front with a real, real big save there. Another big face-off again here. Barry won the last one. Here's another big one for him. They might make enough noise to knock that noise meter off the wall here in Cincinnati. 37 seconds left in the power play. Actually, 38 according to the scoreboard clock here. 53 on the game clock. Miller's going to kill some time and try to take the crowd out a little bit. They're booing, so they're away from the the noise and cheering, but they'll get back there. How about like right now? Draw to the right side of Greenway. Miller fought hard but couldn't win it. Riche at the left point. Barry right across and rolls. Settle the shot. Save Greenway.
about all alone. Rebound comes past the crowd, and he's able to just... All you're doing is walking it at the net, and a big, big goal there in the tie game again. It's a power play goal, and we're talking 40 more seconds, and we may see another shootout two weeks in a row here on Prime Network, but it could be a long 40, and now down to 34. There's Atlanta on the rush, over the line, McDougal lost it. Cyclones get it back. Neutral zone. Long one by Sharon, down to 22 seconds left. Behind the Cyclones net, they get it. Right side, that's going long distance for Isaac. Atlanta will make the touch on it, and it's touched by Corey Cross. An important draw coming up in LeBlanc's own end, who's back in goal, obviously. Yeah, real striking play by, by Trevor Kidd. Here's the, or Ian Kidd, I should say. Here's a guy with a lot of experience, not a young kid. He had plenty of control there. He had the puck behind the net. There was no reason for him to shoot that off the board. He could have skated with it. There's only 11 seconds on the clock. There's no reason to try to dump it off the board. Skate it, have puck control, and really, Gino Ubarato calls a timeout here for a big important faceoff in the Cincinnati end. And that's a really, really bad narrow mistake by Ian Kidd, something that Dennis Rossi is not going to really be happy about. Atlanta 4, Cincinnati 4, 11 seconds away from a shootout. If it goes to that, are you ready again or what? I don't know if I'm ready for that. It all happens so fast. But it's really interesting now. Gino Bracco trying for one shot. Here, a big face off again. He probably will have Miller out there again to take the face off. He told us that was his best face off man this morning. Let's see who he's got out there. He's got McDougal. He's got Rivers back out on the point. Who else does he have? He's got Jeff Medill out there. So again, all he wants to do, Edgerton's out there. What he's going to try to do is McDougal's try to gonna win this back to the point, probably on his forehand, back to Rivers, who will probably try to feed Buchanan for the one shot. But all they're doing is they're going to go to the net. Big face off there. Oh, no, we're not, because Cincinnati won it. Shoot up, folks, five seconds. Long distance shot, just wide of LeBlanc. I'll tell you what, this is going to be the noisiest shootout you'll hear this year on Prime Network, unless Cincinnati doesn't score a goal. Well, what's really interesting, I guess we're at 4-4, four to four, but when, when Cincinnati scores more than four goals in a the game, they're 21-0. Yeah. So, I guess next one we'll make it their fifth, but this is really interesting. It's amazing, two weeks in a row, that the home team has scored a power play goal in the last couple of minutes to go into a shootout. It's a real interesting scenario again. Take a break with us. I think we all deserve it. But when you come back, we'll all do the shootout together. It's tied at four in Cincinnati. Shootout time. Atlanta four, Cincinnati four. It's been a wild one here in Cincinnati. Greenlay is 0-3 on these shootouts, and Atlanta as a team is 0-8, so they're not going to approach this with a lot of confidence. If you saw the shootout last week, it goes bang, bang, very quick, and the first shooter is going to be Edgerton. He'll be helped out, no doubt, by the Cincy crowd. Here's Edgerton. He has one goal tonight. Coming in on the backhand, and he scores. Edgerton scores the goal. one to nothing, Atlanta. A pretty, pretty goal. He uh, just held it, held it. He was able to deke. Ray LeBlanc in a very nice, just split it, split it on his backhand into the far side of the net. LeBeau, Dennis DeRoge always uses because he's a goal-scoring sniper, he said. And here he comes with a big chance to tie. Patrick LeBeau, 17 goals on the year, comes in, backhander, and he missed the net. Greenlee gave him nothing, but the backhander was wide. Well, that's where Greenlee's size comes into play. The big guy, he was able to get, I think, his pad over to the far side of the net, and I think he got a piece of it, because that might have went in, because it was a real good move. Here's Eric Dubois. Four goals on the air, and here he comes. The right-hander fakes, and then scores. Beautiful effort by Eric Dubois. It's 2-0 Atlanta. That really puts the pressure. A real nice goal. Here's a very unusual shooter, in my opinion. Not a lot of goals, but he went top shelf. This puts a lot of pressure on Biggs because you don't want to fall two goals behind in a shootout. Don Biggs, 54 big ones a year ago. Here he comes in on goal on his right hand, forehand up the pipe. You can hear it up here, and here's a bad stat. Cyclones, 6-0 in shootouts when LeBeau scores. 0-4 Bernie when he doesn't. That is bad news. And this is a real big, big shot here now. Really, it could get really the fourth of his night. And this is a big one because it could really put Cincinnati behind the eight ball. And this time he misses. LeBlanc stayed with him. That's the same move he really did on his breakaway when he was shorthanded. He went to his backhand and put it over LeBlanc. So, again, a lot of pressure on Glenn Berry. If he had made that, Berry would have had to make this a 
Cincinnati would have lost. Here comes Barry on his forehand, faking the slap shot, coming through, and then couldn't get the shot away. Greenlay delayed him. That's probably the worst thing for a shooter to not even get a shot on goal in the shootout. Well, he made a good play by the stutter step. He faked the shot, but he wasn't able to get a shot away, and that really hurt him. Here's some information that we gave you a little earlier, but it's worth repeating for Atlanta because they've struggled. Here is Jason Ruff. Ruff. And where is it? Oh, don't move, Ray. Oh, you can't call it a goal now. No. Well, Ruff just tried to go to his backhand and then slide in between the pads of Ray LeBlanc, but LeBlanc held his, his ground and didn't slide across the back line near the goal line. That would have won it. Now, unless my math is off, if Goche doesn't score here, it's over. This is a must shot. Goche coming in. Forehand shot. Saved by Greenlay. It's over. Atlanta has won the game in the shootout. Two to one in terms of the shootout score. Five four overall. Oh, Atlanta. I know the home crowd won't like me to say this, but Atlanta, I thought, deserved this game. You're absolutely right, JP. They played a strong game from start to finish. Uh, maybe got called with a bad call there with the stick. Were able to really, you know, play through that and win their first game in the shootout. 0-8 going in tonight in the shootout. LeBlanc stood his ground, played very well in goal tonight. And again, now he's 2-0 in this building. It's only really, the, again, it's only two goalies have won in this building, and he's uh, one of them that's won twice. Guess who will start the next time Atlanta plays in Cincinnati? Uh, you know what? I wonder. <laughs> I, I know you know because you said to me earlier today that Greenlee would probably start because he did win here and the way coaches feel about that situation. A goaltender winning a tough game on the road, you got to come back with it. Yes, you do. I mean, it's been forever in, the, in, in any league that when you have a hot goal, when he's got a number of a team, you go with your with your past record. He won the last time, and he played very solid again tonight. He came up with the big saves when he needed. He came up very large in the shootout, and I mean, I thought he made numerous saves during the game that uh, really were, were, were stoppers, especially in the second period when Cincinnati started getting a roll. Five to four is your final score. Another shootout here on Prime Network. Hope you enjoyed this one. We'll wrap it up for you when we come back to Cincinnati. What a game.